rise for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this evening, uh, we have a Memorial Day celebration discussion with Ali Nimi. Uh, some energy audit results and recommendations from Doug Waite and Gary Samro are with us in the room. Uh, old and new business, and then a non-public session. Um, since Ollie's not here, you guys, and you guys are, you want to start right out? Sure. So let's see. Scott, when I first started, talked about all these things with um, Dave Blage because he's the one who asked me to get involved. Mm -hmm. And then um, after I presented some breakdown of my side of the uh, analysis with um, Scott, he said, well, we may be not looking at doing upgrades to the fire department because it may be a part of a, a greater master plan going forward. So that's the last that I had, had conversations about. I can address, if you're going to keep the fire department, I can address um, what's going on there and the town here and the highway department. Well, we have no short-term plans on the fire department except that the short term is yes they're going to stay so yeah. so we would definitely need some sort of recommendation because that boiler needs to be replaced absolutely okay yeah. okay yeah, absolutely. all right so the short money is to replace it um well, the short money is to replace it in kind with another uh with a Bideris boiler um the Paybacks for anything are, are pretty far out there for any change over to something different, you know, like a pellet boiler. Um, it's it's not even it's not even close. Uh, but that all depends on where the price of oil is going to go. Yeah. And, and I've had a uh, uh, Jason's son created a he works with us. It's created a nice Excel sheet that we can uh, punch in different oil numbers. We can punch in different propane numbers. We can punch in any any different numbers as they evolve and show what the operating cost will be for that period of time when when those uh, those are the prices. But as of when I did the, the analysis here, we'll take the, um, the fire department. Um, if I went the if I went with pellets. It would go down to three thousand three hundred thirty-six uh, dollars a year operating cost. That's based on two hundred fifty dollars a, a ton, um, at two hundred fifty at two dollars and fifty cents a gallon for oil. The operating cost is four thousand and ninety-five dollars. So, yeah, you're saving seventeen hundred bucks, but you know, the payback on putting twenty-five thousand dollars into a new pellet plant versus taking an old cast iron boiler out and putting a new cast iron boiler in. It just doesn't make any economic sense at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Especially if they're thinking it's not permanent. Right, exactly. I guess the, you know, the direction is the direction where the town's gonna think about where are we gonna go with, with that facility, police station. I mean, we have some, some, some big decisions to make your way as far as direction. You know? But again, yeah, the, the, you know, I think the payback would probably be too long. Yeah, uh, and the good, the good news is with an oil boiler, um, is they're off the shelf things. They're, they're not, a, it's not a high expense uh, piece of equipment, nor would a propane boiler be also. Uh, one consideration that you have, and I'm not sure where the status is if you have an underground oil tank there. It's, it's below the regulatory limit, so. Below, the below a thousand gallon, oh. it's a five hundred oh. gallon oh, okay. tank. Right. So you're outside of the regulatory. Uh, okay. Uh, do you, is it a uh, just steel? Um, it's a steel, kind of partially is underground is it, tank. Is it double wall or? Uh, any I kind of honestly. Okay, so it's been in there for a long time. Yeah, it may, you know, it's been actually maybe a double wall tank. It's just because it's only partially underground. But. So there's a. The reason I'm, I'm grilling my friend Gary is that uh, 
um, there's a risk if you get a, a leak. Uh, there's a, a lot of expense in, in remediating it if if it happens. Mm -hmm. um, a consideration you could make is to uh, go with propane. You already have a propane contract for your tanks down here. I'm not sure how you negotiate that uh, with the different propane companies, but you could negotiate getting a an new propane tank above ground, get that steel risk out of the ground. And um, when you negotiate your propane, you want to have multiple companies looking at it because the prices can range all over the place, a lot more than, than oil uh, dealer is. Are you talking about the, the boiler itself? The boiler could be, no. The, boiler, the boilers are, you can get a higher efficiency boiler, propane boiler. Now it's a matter of what you're going to buy the propane for. You, um, so I personally, I, if I were going to replace for a short period of time, I would uh, prefer to see you go with the propane as opposed to a, a cast iron boiler. It'll do a better job. It's a it's a less less upkeep. You don't have to clean it as uh, diligently as you do uh, an oil boiler every year. That would be my recommendation. Would, would be to go propane. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. Ideally, if we were going to be there for twenty years and say we're never going to do anything with the fire station, well, yeah. certainly we'd look at some renewable energy options. You know, mm -hmm. uh, down the road. Yeah, because my worry when when even the pellet came up in suggestion is you know where to be able to house enough pellets on that site because it's I mean there's not much you don't have much extra room on that site right Here, yeah here's a, a really neat thing that I just discovered in while doing this mm -hmm. is that there's a company in Maine called um, Mises Maine Energy Systems and they get a storage unit depending on how big a boiler you want and so you can imagine your 40 foot long uh, storage compartment that has the boiler, pumps, expansion tank, and a bag pellet uh, up to nine tons. I don't know if you've seen these things, but they're actually, as they fill the pellets in, the, it just inflates it basically. Mm -hmm. um, bring it on the site, put it down, connect two pipes to it, to your existing system, and away you go. But it's still a heck of a lot more money than right. that. Um, so if it's not a permanent solution, then I wouldn't recommend. Mm -hmm. yeah, even though I know the state has actually I did some research today. Oh, okay. I still have a friend of the UC, so oh, good. Uh, but you know, there still is a forty percent rebate on renewable energy systems. It does expire in June, but they are expecting to to uh, be, be renewed in June for that to continue forward. So. I, knowing that you're that the fire department is not forever, um, I would I would defer going to the biomass until hopefully at some point it's, mm -hmm. it's down here. And uh, at that point, I would recommend doing a, a centralized plant that would handle all three buildings, three being the assumed police department at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and. One of the things that's happened since we did the, I don't know if you know, I did the en engineering for the pellet plant down at the high school that does both the high school and the elementary school. Mm -hmm. uh, and since then, there's a new way of doing biomass called partially dried chips. And uh, it might be something to consider at that point because it would also be able, to, I know that it would make some of the loggers in the region happy to have a, a place to put wood chips. Uh, mm -hmm. they've, they've lost some of that with the um, power plants not being as productive in that manner. But that's in the future. Yeah. Awesome. All right. That's what I was thinking. You took the word right out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. my very thoughts this afternoon as I was running through some of this stuff. <laughs> so, it so it sounds like the the general consensus is a propane replacing the system with a propane system is a way to go. Yeah, right. I, I really, I, I think at this point, knowing that it's not forever, um, that that would be the route I would recommend. Okay. Yeah. And that, that's really, uh, 
fire department's kind of near and dear to me, so that's kind of a, that's really a critical path right. uh, that should be done. You know, we spent well, almost two weeks with kerosene heaters down there waiting for uh, parts for that boiler. Yep. You know, when we have $3 million worth of rolling stock in the building and all our gear, and we're, we're heating the building with kerosene heaters, mm -hmm. to me, that's really not acceptable, to be honest with you. Completely agree. Uh, that we certainly need something that is going to be more reliable. So I see that really is, is critical path. I know you guys have a lot of work to do with that. Mm -hmm. I think we're on that same page. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to let Ollie do his thing? Anyway, if we have Ollie jump oh, in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> How are you doing this evening? Hi. Did you uh, guys get the uh, the letter? We we just saw it this evening. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you know basically you know you don't have to do it tonight. If you want to, I just came down if you had any questions. And yes, I, I I realize I have a phone message from you. So my response is yes, I will I will uh, play at the uh, the monument for you. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Okay. I didn't want to bring that up. Here. No, that doesn't. Yeah, no, I I yeah. I know I realize I had a it got it popped into my emails and then got buried yeah, quickly. Yeah. But yes, I will uh, I'll do that again. Great. I guess I'm so. glad I don't play any instruments. <laughs> 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 Um, but no, we'll we'll figure out who's going to do what and yeah. get back with you on that. Okay, but uh, you know it only goes into the program, so we, you know we got plenty of time. Okay. Perfect. All right. Hey, thank Excellent. you very much. Thank, thank you for coming you. down. Thanks, Alan. Okay. Um, so what about the DPW? Yeah, DPW. Um, so you, you have existing oil systems there now. It, is the, I guess the question is, is the intent to, uh, you have one failed furnace there. Um, if you're going to upgrade that and keep that building for the time being, again, I would recommend going to propane. We could put a high efficiency propane boiler in that's large enough to handle the whole thing versus what you have now is propane, uh, oil furnaces and oil boiler. So you've got three different, well, more than that, but three main heating sources, the boiler and then two furnaces in the back base there. One of the furnaces is down. Um, going, you already have propane on the site with I think 3,000 gallon tanks underground there. Right there. Um, and putting in a new high efficiency propane boiler there, you can then feed hot water coils to um, handle what the furnaces are doing now, a lot simpler. And you wouldn't have to have, have the oil being pumped around as you do right now. Um, in the future, those same air handlers or unit heaters could uh, be fed with a pellet or a wood chip. So we wouldn't be wasting any money other than putting in the propane. And at that point in time, you can you still keep the propane and your boiler as your backup. Mm -hmm. you, as you have a second a backup system if you have a problem with your uh, biomass system. Mm -hmm. um, that's my recommendation there. Um, for here, different. Um, I would strongly re uh, recommend a uh, vari variable refrigeration flow system. Um, it's a high efficiency air source heat pump that gives you both air conditioning and heating. Um, that technology has um, really <coughs> become more and more uh, affordable and efficient. A lot more competition in it, so it's the prices are coming down. Um, would give us individual zone control uh, in, in the whole, as, as much as we want to make. Uh, the delivery systems can be as simple as uh, high sidewall, um, what they call mini splits, mm -hmm. mini split, yeah. um, or we could do air handle. There's such a variety of ways that we can deliver to the space. The least expensive is with high sidewall mini splits. They, um, as 
as I said, they can go down to a minus uh, 13 degrees. So I don't really have any concern if we size it correctly uh, to, to deliver the space. And are you planning that, that this building is going to stay for a long period of time? So it's a good investment. This, what you have there here now is, is adequate, but I know that you have real significant comfort issues. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and it is less expensive to use the uh, air sourcing pumps. If at some time in the future, and I know Gary has, has had dreams about using, getting some sort of alternative energy source for the town, um, the air source heat pump is a way of utilizing that energy. It's electric. And electric, uh, the prices for electric energy have gone up extremely slowly compared with what fossil fuel can do. And going forward, I expect that to remain true, if not more so. I saw the BRV would have these flex on in the report. Yeah, I think that's a yeah, very good option, you know. We've been doing a ton of them, and um, how do they come? Wood, it's been a very, very efficient system and uh, very trouble-free. How do they compare, like cost to run annually? Well, if we look, and did you get? I'm not sure what you. No, I was here. asking. So I don't no. think we. So if we're looking at received any of We're yeah. looking at um, uh, the town offices. The right now. You're at these at these current prices. It's about even with the oil prices at two fifty a uh, gallon. Hmm. It's about wow. twenty seven hundred. It's a big. It's a hundred dollars more. Let's call it a hundred dollars more for the air sourcing pumps annually. Annually, hundred dollars more a year. Wow, that's, that's surprising. Yeah. Two fifty, and that's what that is. Is at uh, two dollars and fifty cents a gallon for oil, and at eighteen cents, eighteen and a half cents for uh, electricity. You, and that's based on what you're paying for electricity now. I that seemed a little bit actually high, but that's what uh, Margaret used um, based on your your adult yeah. yeah. What's used for air conditioning in here now? Uh, some sort of central air unit that's yeah, they, yeah. I mean, there's I think it's, it's really quite a um, interesting thing. I think it still sticks out the back, yes, it does. End, yeah. right? Yeah, oh, I think I just noticed that today yeah. actually. Yeah. Sticks out where the, the, the gable end, the uh, oh. gable end, gable yeah, end yeah. Is, it's, it's like mounted end. right on the wall, yeah, oh. yeah, and uh, it's I think that it's was here. Like, it's here. Got, yeah. I think that, that's been here since uh. Uh, when I worked over in building number two, which is uh, getting on that, over 40 years days. ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's in eight days. Yeah. That's how old it is. That's how old it is. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So this annual cost to heat. That's heat. heat. That's cool. strictly that, heat. That wasn't. That's, no, but I'll, I, I will guarantee you the cooling will be less because that's such an ancient um, mm. inefficient system. These, these air source heat pump, the VRS systems are... 50% or, or more efficient in their operating costs than what that thing is. You'd be controlling individual spaces. Individual spaces. As, as comfort levels. And yeah. just the efficiency yeah. of the compressor, yeah. the, the refrigeration system is, is that much better. I'm sorry, I didn't have Thank any you. copies for that. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So um, I guess my um, my only thing. So the recommendations you've given us. Um, have you? Do we have that in writing already, or is it something you can put into writing so we know yeah. what? So when we're looking for quotes, we can. So what? What I. Oh, there's three. Yes. Yeah. No, it's three different things. Uh -uh. The answer. The answer is yes. It is. It should be put into a written scope of work. Uh, I didn't want to do that mm -hmm. until we had this discussion. Um, save on some work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but putting a, a uh, what I call a detailed scope of work together that can be given to uh, pre-qualified, I prefer, if you can make it work that way, 
design, build, mechanical contractors. And I had that preface there because unfortunately sometimes you go into municipalities or institutions and they got to just send it out to the street uh, without any pre-qualification. But that's a recipe for a lot of heartburn on my part. Mm -hmm. All right, so when I say pre-qualified. As in, we invite contractors to find out. I know all the contractors that I would invite. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this for 40 years here, so I, I know pretty much all of them in the area. Um, and say, would you be interested in bidding on this? And I, basically, I'm taking the pre-qualification because, frankly, I don't know a lot about it more than you guys do. Mm -hmm. So, what we can typically do in that scenario is somewhere in the bid specifications. Yep. If there's certain qualifications that a vendor has to have, um, we can make that as part of the, the re you know, the, the requirement. Yep. And if somebody responds that doesn't meet those requirements, it's considered an unresponsive bid. Okay. So that's something that we can work with you we'll on work, to make we'll sure work, we... We'll work with that. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay. So, okay. so Scott, I'm, I'm sure you were already aware of some of the recommendations, but we're looking basically um, propane systems mm -hmm. at the DPW and the fire department, and then the variable um, refrigeration, so spl mini splits, yep. basically. Um, for here. Okay. Do we know if we have three phase power here? We do we have three phase power Great. on one of those poles yeah. out there. Okay. Because yeah. that, that's important in the VRF system. Um, so you, you use the plural mini splits. Um, there'll be multiple indoor units, but only one bigger outdoor unit. Mm -hmm. um, the, yeah, way, the way that system works is that it has a variable speed compressor on it mm -hmm. that uh, ramps up and down as the valves open on the individual yep. units. And you can get simultaneous heating and cooling so that you're in the morning if somebody wants to have heat coming on um, and they don't want cooling, this is most spring and fall sort mm -hmm. of situation. Um, and somebody says, they got come, we have a computer room. Um, then we can ramp that up and have cooling there at the same time. Hmm. Great. That's excellent. Uh, thank you for preparing. Yeah, all thank that. you so oh. much. Well, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, uh, it's what I do, and I, I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, then, yeah, then we look forward to seeing your... I'll put out written, written scopes will work together, and um, actually I um, might work with Travis on it, give him a little more experience. Awesome. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Yeah, great. Great. Thank you. Great. Thanks, guys. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you both for your time. Yeah, not a problem. problem. Last week, Ron gave me grief. I sat over here by this window and caused a glare <laughs> until the sun dropped below the tree line. <laughs> All right, so I guess we're on to old and new business. So you're writing some stuff down. Yeah, a few things. Um, the EMD response. Um, we had already discussed that she should be going through Southwest Regional Planning. Mm -hmm. That was because they already have all our stuff. It should be a quick update. So that's that's her answer. She needs to go through Southwest Regional Planning. Okay. Um, because everything else is gonna cost us money where this doesn't. Yeah. And I know she's worried about us responding and getting it in on time. I don't think we were on time the last one. And with everything else going on, I don't think they're gonna crack down on us if we're a little late. But Yeah, so um, yeah, Lisa Murphy didn't see based on um, the you know from Southwest didn't see an issue for us being able to complete it in a timely manner. Yeah. I already talked to um, uh, both Meredith and uh, Tim about uh, the amount of time they would have to devote to that effort in working with uh, Jess and uh, Southwest. Um, and they figure it's about 
five to seven sessions of one to one and a half hours long each. And uh, Meredith and Tim um, said that they would make themselves available to do that uh, on the schedule. And then I, I guess I, she said she needed access. Of, does she mean the trailer that she needs to get into? Let me see what. Um, sorry. Oh, she made me mean access to the. Um, the e, she wanted to get into the EOC to do some cleanup and reorganization. Right. And she was going to let me know. Uh, Is that the trailer she means? No, she means. Oh, downstairs. The office downstairs. Oh, okay. Yep. And um, you know, originally back when you know we were going to pick a Saturday morning, I was going to meet her there here uh, to give her access to both the conference room and the uh, office itself, uh, so she could do an inventory of what's available. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so could you get with her just to start coordinating that effort? Um, I have, and I, um, I, I was pretty sure I already gave her the contact information for Lisa Murphy. Yeah, and that's what I thought we had responded about to that a while back. A while back, but yeah. so maybe uh, something got dropped in communication here. Okay. But I thought that was already communicated to her the week that we made that decision. Yeah. Um, and then my other piece was um, we had been discussing with Rick, and then Jen. So iWorks, so when iWorks started up, I'm sure they did some sort of training for Debbie and Lori and everyone that was here at that mm -hmm. time. Um, do we have the ability to, are there like video tutorials for them to watch or is there a training they can do? Because Rick said it, <coughs> there's just pieces that aren't being done that he thinks Sue just didn't realize what she has to click and pieces like that. Right, so I met with Rick and Susan yesterday on okay. this subject. Awesome. And we, um, uh, what I'm trying to do is, is see if we can schedule a conference call with iWorks for next Monday when Rick's in, so we can kind of discuss what our needs are and kind of get an understanding of what iWork cap capability is. And then out of that discussion, determine what additional training we are going to need and also what additional licensing costs might be if we want to add additional users. And that's what I was going to say, because we're looking at, right. we might need to add three to four, um, and I'm, I don't know if Rick filled you in more on what, or if you had a yeah. chance to watch the meeting. Um, basically what it is, and, and I happen to go look at um, someone who I know is currently dealing with um, a building permit, and I pulled it up, and right off to the side it says, notes, Rick, yeah. you know, and he said that's really what it is, is that, you know, if we get these additional logins, say like one login for the planning board, not, not each member, right? But a planning board. Yep. That when they do something, if there are if there's a list of twenty things that have to be completed before Rick should give a certificate of occupancy, then it'd be very easy for those to be put on there. And every time that pops up, Rick can't ignore it. It pops up in his face. Planning board notes until they're completed. It, it, exactly, and that's. You know, that's one of the things we discussed as far as just the general disconnect that we have right. is that Rick says often if there are conditions, let's say on a subdivision or something like that, he's not always readily aware of what they are yeah. and he's you know making his decisions without all the data essentially. Yeah. Um, so, and that kind of gets back to, you know, we discussed the meeting we had you know, last fall uh, right. about this subject, or last summer actually, um, and uh, some of the things that uh, we can come up with as far as a way to to route the applications around for comment. And I'm pretty sure that iWorks is going to be able to do that electronically. And we get back to the, you know, we had some of the feedback after that meeting was, you know, the concern that getting input from each of the boards or commissions uh, might be necessary before they have their next meeting, just because of the timing of their meetings. Mm -hmm. And I know that, um, you know, John Schaumwaffel, for example, was concerned about not being able to um, have it, the whole board comment on something. And the reality is most times you can't do that, right? So 
you know, we're going to have to come up with a designee from each of them, and depending on, you know, what the situation is, they may only have five to seven days to submit comments on something, and if they don't, then, you know, we're going to move forward without their comments. But so, I think that's a good thing with those notes, yeah. is that they can be as vague or as specific as they want in those right. notes. Yeah. Right. And I think that's where they that's where they can have that power of the whole board going, how do we want this worded? And they can word it exactly how they want. Yeah. And then if the person that way, everyone in that board is very comfortable with, with what they've written down. Yeah. So then if it's one person that has to make a decision that has the time to go look at this site, mm -hmm. it's their then as a board member, they're comfortable because the discussion was had, the notes were specific, specific, and they went out and went, yep, that's exactly what we wanted, or that's not even close. Mm -hmm. Or can, can, this is what we were looking for that's close, but you know, it needs to go more lefter, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. It, it's, you know, but I think yeah, that's it seems that. pretty flexible. Right. Yeah. So I think that's what it is, is if, if the boards take the time to look at what they, they need, and are specific. I think that, I think that takes again that closes that circle, you know, yeah. and makes it very easy for Rick to understand. And if he doesn't understand, it's not misunderstanding uh, misunderstanding by vagueness. It's misunderstanding because okay, I, I'm not sure I understand what you get. It's very, is yeah. this what you mean or is this what you mean? Because you got a lot in there. So let me ask you a couple questions. So there, so I think that's the the piece to. To go with on that, so I, I agree with you. There's a... they, they definitely all bought into this, mm -hmm. um, and I think they're going to jump right into like learning. Like, I, I hope so. I, yeah. I mean, like I said, we you know based you know Rick and I kind of had the same recollection I did is that it seemed like everybody was on board at that meeting, but then after the meeting we started getting other fallout that seemed to be putting up obstacles on why we couldn't move forward with something like that. Mm -hmm. But based on my knowledge of what other towns are doing, I think there's no reason why we won't be able to do it. But we need to operate as a team. We need to have cooperation across the board um, to uh, to implement something like this. And you know, anytime you implement a, a broad policy that impacts so many people, mm -hmm. you know, having having the, the the right level of cooperation is the only thing that's going to make it successful. Yeah, I think everybody's. Of the understanding that we're in the season of can do it. Yep. And team. That's <laughs> what we're trying anyway. Yep. <laughs> um, those were the only piece I had. I mean, I had another question off of that meeting that just it kind of boggles my mind. And so I just need to voice it. It's the whole deal with the, the intent to cut versus the conservation having a chance to look first. I, I don't know. It just seems to me that be very odd, and and it's it's a state. It's you know the state. Yeah. So it it's oddity is normal, but the fact that the board of assessors has to approve a intent to cut within five days or seven days or whatever, but the concert board the conservation commission has no ability to go look at the site to say yes or no, they can or can't cut there. So it's a matter of, they they, they would have to know almost immediately. Yeah, each, like would have to like, know simultaneously. That, right, so which, they, it would have to be going out to. the eye works. So it would have it would to automatically go. automatically generate a right. push notice to, from what I understand from what except, we're saying. Yeah, except that they're applying for an intent to cut. They're not even in eye works yet. It's a separate thing. There, the intent to cut is before a we could put it. We could put it in. We'd have, yeah, we'd have to figure something out, yeah. Right. If, we if just make some, that a part of the process. Or part of the app, like that, maybe that's where they put in their application for an intent to cut, if there's some way to do that. But yeah, I mean, basically it would have to be when the assessors approve, it would have to push immediately and that that intent to cut, because I remember us discussing this, that it would almost... The application for an intent to cut would almost have to uh, release the uh, give release for the conservation committee to walk the land. Mm -hmm. The um, yeah, I want to look into that more because I'm getting different opinions on uh, whether the intent to cut application can be shared or not. It can't be shared 
to the public. Right, and that's what got me. The, but they're I not a public. It can be shared amongst the top officials. Right. But I want to confirm that. Yeah, because that was my. Because that's what we kept getting was that well, it's it can't be a public document. Well, that's like the planning board asking us something. It's not a public document. Right. You know, it's you know, it, it, it's still within the town to figure this out before now it's released now it's a public document so yeah. but that it just seemed very odd because like bob said it's all of a sudden before you could have three huge issues before you ever even apply for an, a building permit yeah you know just by the fact that oh, well they did this and then while they were ripping that up it, it changed this and it did that and you know so it's just it's it's yeah so well no the whole thing's interesting and then interestingly enough we have what's going on across the street as an interesting situation as well just because yeah. it you know spoke with debbie a little bit about it today like at what point is something supposed to be like was an intent to cut supposed to be issued for up there it probably depends i don't know how much he cut and i think that's the other deal i don't know how it's i think it's based on the extent of acreage you're cutting. But then now the whole landscape's being manipulated, and I don't think we, there was a need for a permitting, but it just seems like it's going so far that at some point there should have been some type of oversight, and I would I, think. Yeah, and I don't know whether you were included in the correspondence I had with Jeff on that subject when I asked him. Yeah, he said I was he's trying, trying to give him a was, heads up that. Hey, he had gotten complaints. Yeah. And he said he was just making storage space back there. I talked to Jim Coffey a bit about it, and, and we're not sure of the volume of wood that was cut. And then the big question is was it wood that was removed from the property? Well, a lot of it wasn't. It was brush that was burned on the property, which you don't necessarily need an intent to cut for. So it's all very ambiguous right now. Um, and you know, Jim wasn't sure how we would go about at this late date be even being able to measure the volume of wood that's been cut. Um, I, you know, Jeff is obviously aware that we know there's activity over there and that we're concerned about him, you know, getting too far ahead without getting the appropriate permits. I, I'm not sure what else we can do, you know, other than to keep watching and if he starts to do something that that you know would raise a flag with Rick or, or one of the other town officials. Um, I don't think he's removing any soil from the property. I think mm -hmm. he's reconfiguring over there, so I don't know that he's violated anything in that respect. Um, so, uh, I, you know, nobody can tell me of any specific violation that they see based on what's been done yet. Yeah, I, sp I spoke with Jim and yeah. Jeff as yeah. well, and that's that was the issue. I think, and I don't claim to be, a, you know, a master on the subject of intent to cut, but Jim, yeah. from what I understood, he said, if you're having it brought to a sawmill or you're selling it as firewood, that this is where the issues come in. And if you're just taking it for personal use, then it's a different ball game. Yeah. And when I talked to Jeff, he said work was slow for a couple of weeks. So he had his guys come and he told them, you guys can just take whatever firewood you want. And yeah. that's what Jeff said happened to the wood that was there. And it is, if I understand correctly, it is by board feet of lumber, not by acreage. Right. Is that right? Uh, it's for an intent. Yes. I say that's that like a full assessment of the standing. Temporary. And that's what Jim said. What would you do? Go on Google Earth. But right. I mean, how often does that get updated? Right. Yeah. So yeah. what do you? Yeah. Be it doesn't do? update very often. Yeah. So. Um, and then Scott, if I have a question about what a capital reserve fund can be used for, do I contact the um, trustee of trust funds? Well, so interesting. You should bring that up. So uh, I want to say about, well, it was right after, you know, town meeting and the vote. And, you know, Meredith had raised the issue she, because of the wording of one of the articles and whether this was really an expendable trust. And, you know, we kind of got into that. Dave ended up 
answering her question for her. But that actually got me and the trustees talking and Roger talking. And Roger has actually gone through a lot of work at going through each one of the trusts and kind of backtracking on when the trust was formed, when it was, was it formed as an expendable trust or when was it, it, it you know, mm -hmm. uh, turned into an expendable trust? Who has the authority to spend? So Roger has actually put a binder together with, you know, at least in, in uh, you, know, uh, you know, kind of first pass form. But the goal was, and, and I talked to Benthi about this, was to end up coming up with a document that, uh, you know, we're gonna have them review it. And if everybody's in agreement, then that's something that uh, will be available to us all the time. Great. And the other housekeeping thing is because some of the wording or what they're called changes over time, depending on which born article and how it was written, is kind of cleaning that up. And it may require us to have some housekeeping warrant articles next year just to clean up some just, of those just issues. name changes. And, and yeah. we want to make sure, I mean, the goal is to make sure that the MS9, that the trustees uh, uh, print every year for the town report, that what they're calling it matches what we're calling it in the rest of the warrant. So, you know, the taxpayers can look at, look at the warrant, look at the town report, know what the balance is because they're looking at the right fund Mm -hmm. and and uh, before they you know will go to deliberative session or to, to a vote so we're trying to um, clean that up and that's well along so I'm okay. hoping that because uh, awesome. my question was is we know that with the heating systems yep. we can use the um, building yep. maintenance capital reserve yep. expendable reserve yep. but with the work that the scope of work at the police station are we allowed because it's not it's a rental property it's not so because that's a piece is um, um, good question don't don't have an answer off the top of my head on that one okay but, uh, typically on a commercial fit up the tenant right bears the cost yeah right? it's what it's the funding mechanism for us right. to do it that, that's um, Yeah, can we? Because um, Jason was able to, he's on the other end speaking with the chief and stuff about um, his, like what we would need to do to have, because we, we found some, we've got a volunteer group led by um, Jason's brother because um, Jeff is fine with volunteers doing it as long as it is led by someone who knows what they're doing. Yeah. You know, we don't just want, you know, brand, you're like, hey. Razoo. Yeah. Um, but obviously they don't they're not gonna do front the cost of materials and such. So we just wanna know where we would where we would be looking to fund that out of whether it could be used out of the capital reserve or whether we're gonna have to do some um, looking at the budget to, to get some projects done using the general government buildings yeah. um, fund. So so that that was where it came from. So okay. So that, that, that's what prompted the, the discussion. Okay. All right. Yeah, and just uh, since we're on that subject. Another number one. <laughs> <laughs> My brother and I met with the chief last week, um, and the chief requested anything that would be done up there would be put off until fall. Uh, but we did go through the office, and we're going to try and come up with a material list sometime soon to see what the cost would be. Okay. Was there a there reason are, that, the, like... For the fall, did he say why? Or he said the biggest hurdle is no matter who does the work, there needs to be somebody there while the work is being done. Every minute mm. that a worker is in there, so um, and he, both him and my brother, are starting to feel like, how is this ever going to work? Uh, but when we looked at it, they're small projects, and they can be done. Some of them can be done in one day. Yeah, like so a it's day a matter of coordinating yeah. just one day here, one day there, one day there, and then hopefully it would. But we got somewhat of a w working plan. I want to draw, draw up some sketches and make sure stuff works. Well, okay. I, I'm wondering if 
if labor funding, in other words, if he has to have an extra person there mm -hmm. in addition to what he would normally staff, is that something that we could also put as part of a project to pay out of the GGD funds if, yeah. if the police department labor line can't absorb yeah. it? I, well, like, I asked, like, if, if Mary, is right, she certified to do that, and could she get paid overtime yeah. to be there if the guys wanted to go there on a Saturday? Yeah. And he, But he said right now they're so short-handed, and right, cause that was, he doesn't that was my, think about it right Yeah, now. that was my question about whether Mary would qualify to be the person And if she would assignment. be willing as well, yeah. because, you know. So these were the thoughts that came up. All right. the fall sometime in the fall all right i don't want the fall to turn into the winter no so we'll still keep an eye right no. now those that's all i had for new and old okay okay um jay did you have anything oh i'd like i think there was some cleaning bids given yeah let me go grab those they're right in the corner of my desk Um, something I wanted, I'm just going to do it when I set it up, but uh, just do an Excel spreadsheet is as we start to have these little projects and you get done, put them into a spreadsheet mm -hmm. and that way, you know, kind of like a to-do list so that we don't forget it because we should we work off of the list that Scott and Mark have like those. Well, that's one I'm talking could, to, just keep no, I'm talking that. in general, Oh, a general, right. you know, punch list yeah like obviously that's they've got a list but yeah. you know as we put these things like if we sit here and we go okay so this, this i'm just going to write stuff down and i'll send it out but that way all right we have something each week kind of to look back on and go what's the progress on this 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 yeah. perfect thank you okay so cleaning bids we got bids back from two vendors one of them, Pro City, isn't fully vetted, so I'm not sure we're going to be able to consider them, except for this building. All Pro, um, you know, Mark was able to give them a tour of the facilities, and they're um, actually I've got enough to hand out on that one. Um, All Pro is is already vetted and the price seemed very reasonable to me. They gave us two options so if you turn to like about uh, four pages in on the back of that page it gives the pricing schedule and okay. if we uh, have them come in <coughs> one day a week a week for both buildings, which I thought was that's incredible. Wow. <laughs> I was yeah. thinking it was going to be way that's so the every other week amount for both buildings for both buildings. Okay, yeah, that's what the proposal says. If we went to every other week, it would be $125, but they're only coming twice a month instead of four times a month, so that would be $250 a month versus $360. 360. Um, in rough numbers. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so at ninety dollars a month, I mean a week, uh, you know, we're talking less than five thousand dollars a year, and I don't have our custodial budget right right off the top of my head, but in rough numbers, we're we're paying uh, Carlene roughly. About sixty bucks a week um, for for her time to come in to do just this building. Mm -hmm. So the ninety dollars a week to do both buildings seems I, yeah. reasonable. To me. I think it's yeah. almost a no brainer personally. Yeah. I agree. So where was the, where was that? Which page? Uh, it's go four pages in and then flip so, the page to yeah. the back. So oh, and you get the price schedule. One more, I think. One more. 
Yep, right there, kind of in the middle of the page. And then, uh, Chief Carpenter's seen these, or I, uh, I, I don't know if he's seen the Pro City one yet. I believe he has seen the All Pro one. Um, the, it, and I'm going by my memory from my conversation with Mark um, that uh, he was concerned about Pro City because they weren't mm -hmm. vetted, that he felt more comfortable with All Pro as a vendor because their vetting uh, has already uh, been established. So they have daily things that they do, and then weekly and monthly. Kind of funny how they combined town hall slash police station. Yeah. It, it's, it's not ninety dollars a piece. Yeah, well that's when I first looked at it, that's what I thought, but then I went back and looked at it and it looks like it is for it for both buildings. You know, we, we can confirm that. Hmm. That that was Mark's understanding, uh, and that's the way I'm kind of reading it. Mm -hmm. Did Carlene request that that be taken off her hands? Yes. Yes. Yeah, she's asked for it a while back. Yeah. Yeah, she would. I mean, it, it, she's doing it because she loves the town and um, knows we, we need the service uh, done. And uh, but she would like to hand it off. Now, where did you see the town hall slash police? That's on the second page. Then it just says Wait, the second page. Yeah. Wow. No. Sorry. On to third page. Three. bring them to both of the buildings. Yeah. So. yeah, so I'd just like to make sure that that's clear and that whatever we sign. Yep. Alright, so it's just one day a week. I wasn't sure because I saw something about yeah. daily schedules. The other one is weekly every and other monthly. Yeah. Every other week was it? Yeah. What? How often does a town office get done? Weekly. It is weekly. Yeah. in custodial, but that some of that is marked, isn't it? That's marked. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, so it must be a combination of 
Mark yeah. and Carlene in there, but still, like you said, if we're paying her 60 and we'd only have to add 30 bucks and we get the police station done as well. Yep. Here's what we have uh, budgeted for this year is around three grand. Yeah. That. So that would, yeah. and I mean, if we're starting now, we're already a couple months into it, it would fall into the budget. Yeah. That we have, so. I think it would be a, a good thing to clarify though. Yeah. We can because certainly ask that question. Yeah. Well, that would be yeah. 4680 annually. Yeah. yeah. And you said we'd budgeted how much? 3000. 3000. Yeah. But like I said we're starting part of the way through now, so it would fall in with what we've It probably We probably fall in pretty close to what we have now. Yeah. We'd overspend a little bit, but we have the extra somewhere else. Um so I'd like to make a motion that we go with all pro for um, custodial services for the town hall and police station pending clarification that the $90 is for both buildings once a week. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Did they say when they could start? Um, I don't know the answer to that question, but I can find out. Maybe it says in here. Coordinated with the chief for times. I'm yeah, sure they would. would want. Yeah. But again, if they do it, um, I'm sure they could pick a fixed time and. Yeah. Saw, actually, I saw in one of the emails there was some prices came in for the roofs. Yes. Roof price on building three. Yep, I've got two of the quotes here, and we're waiting for a third one from Prime. Oh, good. So the um, Melanson. Well, I don't say amounts, but. Okay. But, yeah. yeah. If you're waiting for <laughs> a quote, yeah. you probably don't want to say it. <laughs> thanks thanks yeah. for catching that. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to wait for the third one. Yeah, so we'll wait for the third one. But yeah. still, that's... It's good to have that in process, too. Excellent. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, I think Prime was trying to get out this week. Mm. So I would expect that hopefully probably sometime next week we might have a, uh, a proposal from them as well. Awesome. Awesome. You all set, Jay? That's it for me. Scott? Uh, nope, those were the only items that I had. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually I have one more. I forgot is I do have Frank Volpe coming in to uh, uh, talk about the health officer's position. Okay. So I told him, I thought our discussion would would go uh, on, on the uh, energy audits, etc. until about seven, so he might be here shortly. And, okay. Um, you might not be able to get in, so I better go check. Awesome. <laughs> Did you get any um, response on the incident down at the field on the weekend? No, no. Okay. I hadn't. Did you rip up some grass or what? Not too bad. We drove down on Sunday. Karen and I went down on Sunday mm -hmm. and drove up to the back and kind of looked over it in a couple spots, you know, but um, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, but, I think um, it wasn't. It was so soft that if they were trying to make damage, like it wouldn't, like well, it, they, they, yeah. it would have been easy. Well, like, evidently, and, and it, here's the deal. It may not have been a car because this is the issue. I've had someone complain to me that there is someone in a side-by-side -side that's um, riding the trails, the, but they're not, they're, uh, the scenic roads. Yeah. Um, and they because the gates there on Porter Hill. Okay. 
Is it Porter Hill, Proctor Hill, Porter Hill? The one that runs behind the church. Oh, Whirlpool Road and... So it goes... Is that Prescott? Or Prescott something? or Preston Hill. So, yeah, past, you know, where Woody used to live and then there's yeah. that road. Okay, so yeah. that goes behind the church and it, if you follow it, then it comes all the way out by um, the old schoolhouse and everything, right? Um, someone's riding a side-by-side -side in there and because the gate's there, they're going over the church property to do it. Yeah. And that's how we found out about it. Well, someone complained. The neighbor complains that he saw it because um, evidently it's the four, the side by sides doing it. Yeah. And it's the one that goes all the way into town and fills up their gas at the mobile. Oh, yeah. That's who it is. So if anybody knows who that person is, they should tell them that's against the law and stop doing it. Mm -hmm. um, is that a class six road still? It's a scenic road, yeah. So. But I mean class six. Because I think class six is open to public. This one isn't. It's um, it actually states on the sign that you have to get the permission of the select board to use the road, and mm. no one's come to us on it. And that's a uh, yeah. I've been trying for probably about eight nine months now to get someone to head up that like the four-wheel like the off-road vehicle proposal like to, for us to change the ordinance or make an ordinance in town where they'd be allowed to ride on the roads like certain roads in town mm -hmm. but um nobody wants to do it like like even all the people that do this stuff and ride like for one reason or another um there's mixed emotions like some people are involved with snowmobile clubs and there are certain agreements on people's property that they let the snowmobiles ride but they would never let the like quads go or anything because yeah, the snowmobiles and, aren't going to tear it up but the quads will yeah. which is fine but like so much so that if they find out like if the property owner finds out that someone from the snowmobile club is supporting this um they would pull their ability to use their property mm -hmm. like for their trails so well, it's, like a, said, it's, it's a yeah. lot Dicier yeah. than I Because what's happened thought. is that with the side by side, I guess they're. they're <laughs> That'd be cool. simple. Yeah. I guess with this one, there's. um, uh, They've had some four wheelers that follow along every once in a while or they meet up and run it. But so it's. It's. Um, becoming an issue. Yeah. Because again, they. they it's stated very clearly that to use a road, you have to get permission of the select board. Mm -hmm. And. Um, Obviously, they haven't come to us for it, and then they're driving over private property to get to it because they can't get through the gate because the gate's locked. Yeah, yeah. So. There's one of the issues. Like they'll go to like to get one of those plates for whatever exception, and they don't read through everything. Like those plant plates don't get you access to all the roads. Like it, just because you have a plate doesn't mean you can ride on the roads. Like it's only so many feet like from your property or so many feet from where you're working. Like onto a roadway for very specific right. uses, not yeah, driving yeah. right downtown. Right, like you can to get cross fuel. roads, things like that. It gives yeah. you the ability to you know, like cross over a road, go from one to another. But yeah, it's, it's not, you can't, even if they, even though they may go 60 miles an hour, you can't ride it down Turnpike. Yeah. And see, then the issue we have is um, kind of what we ran into a few years ago when um, the town police said, gave the kids permission to go ahead and tag the roads. I mean, this was years ago. I think Chief Chamberlain was the police chief at the time. He said, yeah, you can go ahead and tag the roads. Because it was easier to just go ahead and... He was trying to be nice, go ahead and do it, mm -hmm. control it. That way they're not sneaking out in the middle of the night and dancing in the middle of the road while cars are coming by, stuff like that. Um, but the problem is, is then the other towns were like, got mad. Because we're giving kids permission to tag the roads. Mm -hmm. And then the issue is, is they're not tagging town roads. They're tagging town hill, yeah, the which is a roads. state road. Yeah. So that's the issue you have is that um, it's, you got to be careful because you open up a can of worms and oh yeah, you can ride on the, we'll let you ride on the roads. Well, the state still has their own laws. Yeah. So you can't override the laws on town hill. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like at that point, like you can have 
crossings on, of the state roads. Right. But there has to be certain, like, so that you can see, yeah. like, in and you certain figure, directions, you have to get yeah. them okayed by the state. And right. And you figure to get to the mobile, what non-town road can you go on to get to the mobile? Or non-state road, I should say. Yeah. They're all state roads that come off of there. Because <laughs> it's, it's uh, Temple Road. Well, yeah. So Temple, that'd be the only one. So you'd have to be coming from Greenville. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's the only one. Because be, yeah, if you come, if you're on Main Street, and, yeah. but the thing is, if you come off Main Street, that's a state road. Yeah. Turnpike's a state road, you know. So, but yeah. So if if you know, just I thought it'd be easier finding someone to like take it up as a call to action because I don't really ride or anything. So, mm -hmm. but I've heard people complain about it unendingly, like not being able to or whatever. I'm like. Well, you know, it's just an ordinance thing. Like we can vote that in on any Tuesday night, and but I guess my question is, did you did you really buy a four wheeler to ride it on a paved road? Well, no, but you can like you make better use of the different trails because not all the trails connect very easily. So, and I don't know what those maps look like, but I'm sure it'd open up a whole world of possibility um, if that was you know able to be done. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah. Well, I was just my point was it, it may not have even been a vehicle, it may or a yeah. automobile, it may have been someone in a because those circles are just it was like yeah. perfect, not out of control, and right? It was like two yeah, or they, three loops, and yeah, they weren't, yeah, it's, they weren't sliding out on it because no. that's what I was afraid of is that they had whipped around and torn up the grass going sideways, but well, they just drove in circles and then drove off, yeah, so yeah, but, so. Looking at the RSAs here, a Class Six road is open to public. Yeah, no, this so isn't a Class Six. This is a scenic. It's a scenic road. So it's it's different. Part of the conservation. Road. Right. I wonder if our map reflects that. So like, I, it's I the have, same thing. So behind, so old county road, part of that is a Class Six, part of it is a scenic road. So on the one side, when you cross over. Uh, Waterloo, and you go up to um, towards Messina. No, so if you're and you go into the old um, country club. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, going up. That's a class six. Mm -hmm. On the other side of the road, that goes behind the houses and right goes that splits Bentie's land. Mm -hmm. That's a scenic road. That double stone wall that goes. Yeah, that's a scenic place. scenic road. And you can't do anything. We can't even take down trees on that. All right. In fact, I think that on the Old County, the one that's on Ben, there's like a tree right in the middle of the road. <laughs> that's what someone told me. They're like, yeah, there's a tree right in there. Oh, wow. Yeah, Colin yeah. told me. Because Colin is on the other side of the road. Yeah. From Benty. All these funny things. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. But yeah, so so that's the deal. You can't, so yeah, the, the scenic roads you can't do stuff with. So oh. Class 6 is, yeah, it opens it up. Class 6 has to be open. You can put a gate, it says here, but... They must be capable of being opened and reclosed by highway users. So that would, yeah, that's something we should look into though. Yeah. Yeah. Just to notify, even to notify people in town, this road here, like say West Benny Hill Road, is a class six road. You can drive your ATVs on there, you know, and Whirlpool Road is a scenic road. You can't, yeah. you know, it would be good yeah. to. Yeah, but I think, like I said, the scenic ones, I'm almost positive, all have signs on them that state, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. So this is uh, Frank Bolby, and I invited oh, yeah. him uh, tonight. Uh, he uh, actually does work for as code enforcement and health officer for um, Ridge. Ridge. And, um, That's it, Frank. and the... Um, Obviously, we need to replace our health officer, and Frank has some bandwidth. Originally, we started approaching this as just to get some temporary help, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking with Frank's uh, availability that he might make a good permanent replacement for our health officer, and wanted to have him come in, talk with you, and if it's something that uh, everybody's in agreement on, then you know, he and I can start this process, and then by next week, have you guys sign it. Uh, I lost <laughs> Yeah. Well, just because we spoke already. Yep. 
this is the form that I use for all the school inspections. Okay. All right. Great. So I need, you know, just so you guys know what I'm going to be looking for. Okay. okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think the schools are pretty, pretty familiar uh, with the process. Yeah. And, um, you know, what I can do if we, uh, you know, can uh, come to an agreement here tonight, then uh, I can put you in touch with the folks at the school and we can get those scheduled uh, within the next week or so. I figure, yeah, because April vacation. Yeah. Yep. the best week that we mm -hmm. somebody did. Oh yeah, custodial yeah. will be there the whole yeah. time, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um so I can get you that contact so information. The only reason I gave you that is yeah. just in case there wasn't an official there if they have the latest copy of like the asbestos report that date, things like that. Okay. Anything that the school can give me a copy of because I haven't done it yet. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Well here anyway. <laughs> All right, Frank. So I, I just started. I'm new at this. Mm -hmm. I'm still learning. It's part time over there in Ringe. I live on Ashburn, you know, I'm five minutes from here. Yeah. So anything I can do to help out here in the town. I was just here a couple weeks ago. We just need your business. My wife, yeah, we just opened a business here, got our kennel license and stuff. So we're going to be working the business in the town. So I'm available. Awesome. And with a part-time position there, but I've been there since December. I think I, 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 I'm pretty sure I get about 12 hours on the books. <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> I've done tenant apartment buildings where people have complained, possible mold, yep. things like that. I've done a couple of school inspections. Yep. Honestly, that's about all I've done. Um, I have my book, I'm reading it. Okay, yep. I'm re catching up on my septic system parts and stuff. Yep. There's a lot more involved in the health office than I thought. Right. And the reason when I came up here, we bought the house that was actually working for the animal control job. Okay. Here in the Ipswich. And then by the time we moved in, it wasn't listed anymore. So the people that I bought the house from, their realtor is the, she's the board in yeah. Fringe. So four hours there at home inspection, we started talking. So I ended up picking up the zoning office a job in Fringe. And I'm like, give me the health office of Howard. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. I'm like, okay, I just moved here. I want to, I'm, well, I need to work. I need to learn the area. I'm like, yeah. so whatever you guys need done, I'm more okay. than happy to help you. Awesome. So uh, the uh, animal control is still, Open, right? Yeah. I have a kennel here in town. Mm -hmm. If something like that comes up, I would be fairly interested in something like that. Uh, I'll have to get you in touch with um, Chief Carpenter because he's, he's the one that would be that um, the animal control is under our police department. No, no, I yeah, no, that, I'm just, I just no, it, no, it's because it that's something. Because I don't think the police department has their own kennels. No, no, we actually have to. Uh, Bridge use, does. They have like eight. Mm -hmm. And I know the animal control officer there was kind of funny. That's how this whole thing started. I guess he's been there 57 years and, and they said, oh, you might be retiring and come to the range and uh, see what happens. They're like, he's not retiring. He's dying on the job. Yeah. They're like, that's it. Do you, why do you want this job? Yeah. So that's, that's how I got yeah. right place, right time. No, so, it's, um, um, no yeah. that's definitely something we, because yeah, <laughs> we, we currently, um, everything goes to uh, Bed and Biscuit or it has to go all the way up to Keene. Yeah. So to have something local, yeah. So we'd have to well, um, let's do this, and then um, then the next step would be to get you in touch yeah, with yeah, the chief and, and take them. Yeah, I do have space available for candle issues if something comes up. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It sounds perfect. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. All right. So. I, I think it's a good idea. I mean, it's to have someone who's the more familiar they can be with it, and to have the the time. Um, I think it's a good idea. Me too, especially no. since I don't have any training, but I have the authority to go and do them, and yeah. I've done one. <laughs> and you? I try to go through the list. I'm, I'm yeah. kind of in the same way, which is yeah. what I was just going to say. I'm a pretty above board person. I'm pretty. Mm -hmm. evil. Somebody comes in here tomorrow and they have like medical experience, 20 years, no hard feelings. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So if yeah. there's somebody else that's, I don't want to say more qualified, I don't want to cut off my own leg, but yeah. you know, if there is somebody that you would expect. No, I just want no. to put it out on the table. I am fairly new at this uh, on the job training. I'm no, I mean, just to give you an idea, our last health officer, she was an, a nurse, but I mean, she didn't, I mean, she had to learn the same, same yeah. as you. She, she had to learn the inspection pieces. And then, like you yeah. said, all of a sudden she's out looking at septic tanks. And right, stuff. right. I was like, this is the only, I, I have a construction yeah. background. Mm -hmm. I, I have, my background is in law enforcement construction. And my wife and I own the large family daycare in Massachusetts. 
COVID shut us down, mm -hmm. which is part of the reason I moved to New Hampshire. <laughs> because we were just, my brother was dead, and there's, there's nothing to do. So twice a year, we have our yearly inspections, and we have to do that, and we're licensed for all that stuff. So I have that background as well, where it comes to the school inspections and the health okay. inspections on that end. Not knowing it covered some of that other stuff, now I get alerted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Right. so how does that work then? We just uh, make a motion to a, a point. Have you looked at what the budget? I have. What was yep. budgeted? I have. I'm, I'm happy with that. And with the uh, yep. salary. We spoke about it earlier. Yep. I looked it up online. And yeah. yeah, I'm well aware of it. Okay. okay. So. I'll entertain a motion. Uh, motion to uh, appoint Mr. Volpe, our um, health officer for the town of New Ipswich. Is there a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome to town. Awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we, I moved in about a week before Christmas on the first snowstorm that you guys yeah. had. Yeah. And my and, and driveway yeah. off of Ashburnham is about you know, 800 feet before you get to the house. I'm familiar with it. Okay. So that was the first thing I saw in a snowstorm in a, in a, in a moving truck when I left. Yeah. So needless to say, my first purchase was a truck with a plow. Yeah. So now I'm all set. So. Uh, you had your snowblower. I did have the snow. Oh, did you bring me my snowblower? That, oh my no, God. I, I was like, snow, you No, no, I took care of your driveway day. for the first couple storms. Okay. Yeah, it was right. Dean called. I owe you money. No. No. <laughs> welcome <laughs> welcome wine, to town. Bottle of wine. I, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I'll take a bottle of wine. I had that's right. Dean, I was like, I know you look familiar. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, I'm like, I. Yeah, no, I just, I just go I don't really do it for work, work, but oh, I'll fine. help people out. I so. just bought, I just, yeah. I went to yeah. my mechanic back in Medford, where we moved up here from. I'm like, you need to get, I just bought a truck with a V plow, the whole thing. I'm like, I got, yeah. like, <laughs> there's no way I'm living up here without a plow. No, did you see, did you see the last storm? I yeah. drive. Yes. Down to Southern Ashby, and there's no snow. Yes. Yeah, here we are. This, this is amazing yeah. because I had, I had to drive car off tomorrow with the mechanic. So I never be taking the plow off. Yeah. So oh God, it's gonna be sixty. Yeah. Two days later, I backed my truck out. Yeah. That driveway. No, oh, you know I went right in that ditch. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. apparently there's a a water drain. I didn't know it was there. Yeah. Yeah. Especially it's with the mud yeah. now, because it was three feet of snow. So I didn't, I didn't see the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, these guys had to come pull me out the first day. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I I am like this far up to my door in mud. In my driveway. Yeah. They're like, in your driveway? I'm like, I, I, you have to come look at it. <laughs> so yeah. I hit the road. He was like, I understand now. I wonder if that's why yeah. Dean's like, be careful for the ditches. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so part of the, the thing was with the new Ipswich was I have to redo the first 50 feet of that road anyway. Mm -hmm. So the, I got a guy coming tomorrow to recreate the whole thing. Perfect. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> so, save, save yourself so somewhere in tear. Because it, yeah, yeah, exactly. it was pretty rough. Awesome. So yeah. for, if yeah. Frank wanted to go... For the animal control, would he go directly to the chief, or do, do we still? I uh, know he could go directly to the chief. And you know, he so appoints animal control. Yes. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah, the chief because it's, it's under. The, the, re the reason I knew that is because I've learned two things about New Ipswich so far: coyotes and ticks. Yep. Okay, because I had a goat. A couple of coyotes came over my fence and took my goat. Mm. So. <laughs> Oh wow! So I've learned yeah. about that and all these, you know, these ticks. I yeah. was like, "What up?" Asking everybody where I go, and I was like, "What do you guys do for ticks?" And everything's the same. Everything's the same. They're all natural spray and the whole thing. Like, yeah, that's what I'd say. But yeah. Yeah. The but yeah, so I was like, "That's what I've learned." That's it. <laughs> it's like coyotes and ticks. So, I was like, so, so are you gonna put a bounty on coyotes if you get? I think yeah, I think so. Or I think so. <laughs> so. I got my dogs. Well, I said I got We got We get dogs. We breed dogs and we do blood. Yeah. So we breed pugs. Dobermans and we breed present mastiffs. So yeah. I actually have a litter of pugs in about six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Nice. But, well, so what do you want me to do from here? So I'm going to give you this form, and um, that's the form that we have to send up to the state because they also have to kind of okay, bless us as well. Okay, yep. And all I'm going to ask you to do is, is look at that and fill out as much as you can, and then you and I will get back together and you know, complete a form, okay. and then I'll get it back in front of them because their signatures need to go on it, and we can do that next Tuesday night and then get it on up to the state. Sure. So you won't fun. necessarily have to be here Tuesday. I mean, if we can, you know, uh, fill out the rest, that can have them do their okay. Oh, their, uh, either way. their piece. <laughs> I'm and, open uh, for that. But um, uh, so start 
fill in as much of that as you can, and then you and I will get together um, maybe in the next day or two, and uh, um, or maybe by Monday next week at the latest, and we can finish working out the rest of the stuff. Okay. Does that work for you? Yeah, it works for me. All right. Yeah, absolutely fine. Oh, okay. what's your phone number, Frank? I'm going to give you, uh, I just have my cell phone up here right now. It's 781. Yep. 354. Yep. 24. Yep. 69. 69. And I have your. your and then I do use the email as I use the code. This old yep. office every day yep. for, for range. So. Okay. All right. You know my houses. I'm pretty easy to get in touch with. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So thank, thank, thank you. All right. Well, hey, appreciate uh, it. Uh, a belated welcome to town. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate it. All right. So we'll schedule everything for the schools for um, yeah. The first yeah. I'll try to days, uh, April yeah. try to connect up with you tomorrow wow. and uh, give you the the right contact information. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. Good stuff. All right. Um, so Shauna had reached out to me because uh, they need to pay the rec desk invoice, and Roger asked if it, like, we could give the approval for that because it's almost three thousand dollars. Um, yeah. Motion to pay rec desk invoice. Is there a second? It comes out of the revolving account. So it, it's, um, it's software. Yeah, it's a software. It's how how everyone signs up oh, for yeah, um, all the different I sports think my and wife stuff. Uses that. Yeah, and it it tracks it and everything else. And it has yeah. um, since we got it. I, I was on the board when we signed up for it, and it has been uh, much more organized mm -hmm. since we went to the rec desk. And it's self funded, so they, we pay through it. Uh, through the registrations. Yeah. And then we're able to even use it. We, we were using it at the pool now too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Which we have to get like back into that process, but yeah, yeah we will. second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That was a motion to pay out of revolving fund? Correct. Yes. Do you want this? I don't know if you can yep. get that to Roger. Yeah, that. actually, I think I probably have a copy of an email I saw it go by today. Okay. All right. So I went to the school board meeting last night. I'm sorry. I completely blanked that we even had that. I got my invite the other day, and then it just got buried. Yep. And I... I blanked it. I, was well, I, I even I RSVP'd, and then the whole thing disappeared. Right. So I and spent then, days like trying to figure it out. <laughs> and so that's the thing; I, it didn't it didn't pop back up on my, like normally. <laughs> I get a notice on my calendar. Yeah. And I got no notice, but yeah, as soon as you hit yes, it disappears and it goes into your cal your Microsoft calendar. Yeah. And so the the way I had found it again, you have to go back into your sense, I think. It, Nicole I don't know, did it was for it. me. Like, it's, but yeah, like, I found and it which took is her why, like three minutes. But. Yeah, which is why I, I forgot to go on because it, it never showed up. And because usually I guess it goes to a certain spot, but it didn't go to the normal spot. That's why I twisted her up for a couple minutes too. Yeah. Uh, but then she was able to find it. Um, but the meeting went pretty well. Um, waiting on some information um, from their business office, like just all the documentation of the past correspondence and just seeing that we got that from them and then internally we can figure out why we didn't make the adjustments like in the office um because they're sure that like they communicated to us what the different amounts were um but there at the same no time flags came up on their end when they got the first payment well yeah like if you got a payment and it was higher i would think that it should have been questioned at some point mm -hmm. um but I think they're putting, you know, things in place on their end where it won't happen again. Um, and then I just wanted to verify the amounts because um, the number that they said for last year was like six hundred eighty-four thousand um, dollars, and no dollar amounts like came up to that, like over two million of you know, like us withholding three months payment and then getting the one forty-five. We, they weren't even close, like in those figures. So I still want to be careful with and get this sorted out 
first, like re re review what yeah. they've sent and then what they sent through again. Like I'll bring it all and we'll all look at it and just make sure that it's good. Um, I requested that um, we got something from them that stated that they weren't that they couldn't come back at us. Like because once we do whatever with the money, like it's gone. Like, mm -hmm. and there's no little fun that we pull out of, like, oh, whoops, you know, like, here's $2 million. Like, that is, that's not our world. Right. Um, yeah. So. They understood. Yeah. Yeah. They did understand that. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just waiting on that paperwork, and I'll, you know, I'll forward that along. Um, I didn't get into school consolidation I kind of want to stay on topic last night and not and then just stayed and observed the rest of the meeting um, which is kind of interesting like hearing from the auditor um, they actually had a budget surplus of 1.5 million for last year um, so it'll be interesting like to see how every like all the dollars and cents works out with the shortfall that they're anticipating or like how all that washes through which is kind of confusing because some things like are reported, like it takes like almost two years to catch up and then other things are the next year. I don't quite understand all the budget. It's stuff, because, but. yeah, it's because of the way they, their budget runs from July 1 to June 30. Mm -hmm. So then everything goes to the auditor and then you get your auditor's report of that school year in your school report following March. Yeah. So it goes, so it ends June 30, and you don't see the auditor's report on that until May, uh, March of the following year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's funny here, like how some, there were savings, like a lot of savings in areas, and then the major expenditures came from the food service part, you know, because that's all just sheer cost. For the school district, right? Like if they're giving the lunches away for f no. no. Well, push away. It's probably you probably would have got more yeah. out of it than I did because yeah. I was just trying to keep up. No, no, it. no. They, they, the only cost they have is the what they paid for busing and such. The mm -hmm. the the food the food service is what we call cost plus. So it's the cost of the goods and services plus a management fee mm -hmm. and there's a contract you know so it says okay come the end of the year either you're gonna make 250 bucks lose 250 bucks you got to pay in 18,000 bucks whatever it is so but, yeah, just to give you an idea like mm -hmm. the number that they said the deficit was was like over a hundred thousand um, it could be but because like a again larger number than anything I had spoken to you right. about again um, depending on when that number was from. Mm -hmm. If that was not this school year, meaning starting August of 2020, if it was school year ending June 15th, 2020, yeah, yeah they they probably lost $100,000. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. It was on the yep. Yep, 19th they did. to the 2020, yeah. They did. Yep. And I could... I could tell you reasons why, but I'm not going to. I mean, it's it's because they're going to have their reasons, and I don't want to get into a yep. pissing match with the school board over. What but all in all, like yeah. the overall report, sounded like they were pretty strong, and yeah. like everything has been been being managed well, mm -hmm. like to the point of like the financial part. Yeah. Um, so even with us with like not having to make that payment, they're still in really good position. Um, and I guess they're set to pay off all their bonds by within six to seven years, I think. Um, so it, it, the auditor said everything's really, sounded really good and they've made changes and taken their recommendations uh, very seriously and made the adjustments that their auditors asked for and it sounds good. So mm -hmm. I was, it was pleasant to hear instead of because we had this little like issue, but uh, everything else seems to be going in the right direction over there. Scott, have you looked into that at all? Uh, I'm sorry. The overpayment. I have not. Uh -huh. I have not had a chance to uh, dig into it. Mm. Yeah. So 
we'll just keep digging away and yeah, yeah. It is what it, at this point it is what it is like you said if they as long as we we have the correct numbers going forward and they're not going to come back on us in two months and go oh yeah we do need all that money yeah yeah you know I mean it's not like it's going anywhere right away but I mean come the end of the year we're going to have a surplus yeah yeah uh, and then that you know at that point we'll make that decision as a board what what we do mm -hmm. so you felt like there was still some ironing out to do with numbers yeah yeah like i just i want us amount. to really like to see whatever they are speaking of just clarity like send it all send it all over let us review it yeah get that like the full understanding of what's going on and then uh have some type of an agreement like from them that states this is what happened so that if our auditors catch something or their auditors question something in two or three years like you know, who knows what happens We'll have this document that states this is exactly what happened. This is why the town didn't make payments for three months, and we wrote them a check. Was because of this, this, and this. They sign off on it. We sign off on it, and it should be done. So was that put on their agenda to get yep, that the out business to us, so. office? Yep, yeah. it's going to be. I half expected getting something, you know, right after the meeting last night, but nothing's come through yet. So nice. I'll touch base with them again. Uh, another cool thing um, that the superintendent spoke about was they're going to start a special projects committee. Um, and one of the, like, the first things that she wants them to look at is what's your vision of a Messina graduate? So we're going to be getting interviewed at some point to give them an idea of like what we think a Messina graduate should look like. So like how they could change their curriculum or what pieces we feel like from the town board you know could be like what changes could be made in the schools uh, more or less to help um, enrich the kids um, so that's kind of neat there's a lot of you know outreach that I feel like that she wants to start making with the town and then the town's people as well um, and start working together on some um, initiatives and just before the meeting started, I got an email from someone that must be a part of one of the PTAs or something like that, or the booster club, about using the town fields. I didn't go through the whole thing, but it must be, like, they really want to start moving this forward and working collaboratively with the town. So it could be a good endeavor, you know, going forward to have the school board and the select board and, you know, the towns, the community working all towards one goal. Of, you mean instead of, instead of denying the rec department the ability to use the schools? I didn't get into that because I wanted to keep it going in the right direction. So there, the talk was including more um, community things into the schools and then also using other community resources for different things with the school. So, you know, in the interest of not, you know, throwing, you know, sand at each other, <laughs> I figured, you know, We'll just go with that positive track and that positive view. So it was a tough time that we just came out of. So <laughs> giving everybody a little bit of uh, grace. Who hasn't come out of a tough time? Yeah, that's what. Yeah, we're, right. dig we're digging out now. So I look forward to working together with them. Um, back on to rec. I guess uh, Shauna was looking to get access to that computer right there like an email login so that she can do some of the rec oh um oh the um computer welfare office yeah okay yeah now nicole and i had both had access okay. to logins to it so yeah i wasn't aware of that yep and then that way she can do some of the rec work here and print stuff off pretty cool when you start going through your list and most of it's already like been touched on um oh the election right to know request update do you know how that went for bob like uh, i haven't that? heard anything back i mean he got i think he saw the correspondence from town council mm -hmm. and um, um you know i asked bob whether he wanted me to reply or whether he was gonna reply to the requester he felt comfortable that he, that he could do it okay 
so um, and that's where I left it with them. I haven't heard anything back. All right. Did I say in the email that doc, the documents would be made available upon request uh, here? Certain the, documents. Certain doc, the, the, right. check, the checklists are available. Mm -hmm. That's like what they sit there, the, the books, and they go through. That's what would be made, made available here on site. Right. Nobody's come to request them. Not that I'm aware of. All right. And then on telephone access... So I said it, um, cause I don't like with the voicemails, like for the different people yeah. is a email generated. So, so I can't speak for everybody cause I'm not a hundred percent sure. Okay. But if somebody leaves me a message, it, it does a, you know, voice to text or voice to email, um, to my, uh, you know, email inbox. Mm -hmm. So I can see. Um, if somebody's left a message. Now, sometimes, you know, the technology is such that the message isn't clear. It's, you know, sometimes it goes yeah. so garbled, but most of the time it's clear. And, um, and you can usually, not always, but usually you also get the phone number that they called from. And that's not always the number they want you to call back on. You know, they might be calling from work and they want you to call them back at home, so they leave you another number. Yeah. So you can usually see most of the message and honestly, you know, I, I mean, what I do, um, you know, even before I pull my voicemails off the phone is I go through my email so I have a general idea of what their question is or what their issue is so that I'm prepared when I call them back to have at least some hopefully helpful information for them. So that's kind of the way I handle it. I, I don't know how everybody else does it. Okay. Yeah, because it's still like, like and it's not just one office, so it's not just the building department, yeah. or like the land use clerk, you know, with her being out and everything. Like, it's not just that office, it's each office seems to, like, phone calls that come in aren't returned in a timely fashion. And it goes all the way from, like, the, the foster care inspection that I had yep. to do, like, that lady. Yep. Um, so it's state agencies, it's our residents, and it's just this bigger thing that I... I'm not going to let go until we kind of figure out like what the disconnect is. Yep. And we, you know, and, and there are times, you know, often people aren't sure what mailbox or what extension they need. So for example, if I get a, a voicemail that has nothing to do with me, it's a land use or a town clerk or something like that. The good news is I can forward that email with the message to mm -hmm. whoever so that they can respond to it. I just say, you know, this calls for you, you know, uh, yep. you know please get back to this person. Um, so, but, and I don't call in here a lot, so I'm not sure how, um, y you know, how the system honestly operates. Well, it's almost um, like there's two different greetings because I've tested it out a couple of different times when the office is open, when it's closed. The one that's like, <clears throat> It's just different. Like, so the one when it's closed, I believe, is the one that says, if you would like to use our dial by name directory, which I don't even think exists, because yeah. I tried to do it, yeah. and it just, uh, and, th and there's no instructions of use the first <coughs> three letters of the last name or the first name or anything like that. It just says dial by name directory, and then so you on your own. One, one of the things I was hoping to get to today, it didn't was to call Comcast to find out who our rep was so that we could get them in here and explain the phone system to us and explain what features it has, because we're not even sure what the full feature set is, mm -hmm. and, um, and then see if they can arrange to get us some, some, uh, you know, some training, whether it's an you know, online tutorial or a person to come in and teach us, you know, at least, you know, I'd like to get myself and at least two others trained to be a system admin, if you will, for the phone system and, um, um, and be able to deal with it because nobody here, we don't have a single person here that we're currently employed that seems to know uh, enough about the system to manage it properly. Yeah. So I think, and like I said, I'd like to have at least two to three people that know it. And, and um, so if we have turnover, if we have whatever it may be, somebody is left behind that understands how the system actually works and can change the greetings 
you know, I, I mean, I have people, uh, apparently we have, one of our messages is, is single digit extensions, like both dial yeah. extension fours are, as far as I know, all our extensions are three digits. So, and well, yeah, so that's, just, the, that's the open office one. Yeah. It says one for the select board, or one, is it one for the tax collector, two for the selectman's office, town administrator, yeah. three, whatever. So you just hit one, two, three, yeah. four, like yeah. on our end. Yeah. Okay. So, and then the closed one is the dial by name options, which doesn't seem to function. Well, yeah, because you don't know is it the first name? Is it the last name? Do you yeah. type out their whole name? Yeah. You know, like, gotcha. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, we'll try to get some clarification on that. And like I said, my intention was to already have that addressed before this meeting tonight, but I wasn't able to. Okay. Well, it'd be good. Like, if I can throw a timeline on it, like, because I've been softly bringing um, it up for a while. So, uh, I'll tell you what my commitment is to have a something set up with Com Comcast. Um, at least I'll have a date for you by next Tuesday, if not sooner. And I will communicate it to you. And then that kind of leads into the next thing out of my list was, it was, is there some way that we could reorganize the town staff or some something so that when we have someone out, someone can kind of like sit in that chair. So it was my vision. You know, like, I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, John, you had mentioned something yeah. to me. Yeah, I just said, uh, like, even if it's, I mean, we, we talked about it, about needing an extra person, then we thought, well, maybe we don't need the extra person, but maybe it's that piece where we need to put, get that extra person in so that we actually have, whether it be a true, whether some sort of administrative assistant type piece, but they know just enough to get through. You know, but they would be that person that, okay, you could have a phone system person, you would have your person that's doing so that, so that the land office isn't only a two day land office, but a four day land office with you have, you know, and then those other pieces that you would want to sue or Jen to be doing, um, is then on another person and maybe they're not 30 hours you know or, or you know so i don't know but that that was just a thought i'm just trying to think of anything you know yeah, so that, well that, that, my thought on it was and when laurie and debbie were both in those positions they knew enough to be able to back each other up mm -hmm. you know it, kind of 80 percent right, right? Um, if, if somebody was out uh, for some reason um and ideally, I would like to get Susan and Jen up to that same level uh, that uh, you know Debbie and Laurie were. The um, Susan has the skills to, and has been working on uh, to some some degree, um, the website side of things, and uh, she also has some experience dealing with Facebook. We haven't quite touched on that yet, but that's uh, from just a general community communication standpoint. I would, um, you know, Laurie was kind of our backup for payroll, for example, when Roger was out, and I'd like to get Susan to ultimately be that person as well, um, so that uh, we, we have some redundancy built in there. Um, and again, as far as the phone system goes, as I mentioned, I'd like to have two or three people be knowledgeable enough that uh, that can be managed. Um, so that's kind of where where I see that going, if possible. You know, I think it's was done to some degree previously. I think we just need to take it up a, another level and have some uh, maybe more structure, if that's the right word, or standard operating procedures, um, and um, um, make sure we get everybody the right training and give them opportunities to practice on a regular basis. You know, I. I I think, for example, somebody doing payroll, I think maybe, you know, once a month, we should have, even if Roger's here, have them jump in and do it, it's just mm -hmm. so it's fresh in their mind all the time. And it's, um, um, so that's kind of my, my thought on it. Now, um, 
Sue's still the land use clerk, right? Well, well, well we changed her role a bit. Uh, she's the land use administrative assistant because she's actually doing the minutes for this board. Um, and, uh, and again, I wanted her to take on you know, the backup payroll person. And if time permits, I would like to move some of the HR uh, functions to her and away from Roger because Roger's been absorbing more things out of the treasurer's office um, and um, uh, I'd like to have him focus more on the financial uh, aspects of things and not necessarily worrying about uh, you know some of the new hire or uh, benefits related uh, type of information that Susan might be in a better position to do, and she has some background in that as well. Um, so that's kind of the thought when we kind of reconfigured um, that job um, for Susan, and to give me and this board a little extra support as well. Mm -hmm. Now, and this is you know nothing against Sue or yeah. anything, but I know like it's been brought up to me many, many times that our minutes aren't up to date. Um, they are not. And, and Sue, unfortunately, out on vacation. No, I know. So, so, the, so this kind of like yeah, gets no, back to the bigger yeah, picture yeah. where I'm really thinking that like one more person yeah. in the mix, like a, a multi-use person that could touch S each one of these offices and have that freedom. So what some other towns do, and they relieve all the boards from the responsibilities to hire a minute taker because the minutes take a long time. Mm. So it's taking Jennifer a long time uh, supporting the planning board. Um, Susan is doing you know the ZBA and this board, and I mean that is you know hours every week for minutes, which is one of the reasons why I wanted Susan to do them because it was just you know taking up a tremendous amount of my time. So uh, other towns would hire somebody to do the minutes for all the boards. I mean, we're recording, you know, most of our meetings now anyway via Zoom. Mm -hmm. And um, so they wouldn't have to be paid to be attending all these night meetings uh, necessarily. Um, so that's one approach yeah. that other towns have used. Um, and um, that would free up you know, collectively, uh, probably, I bet you six to eight hours a week between Susan and, and Jennifer, just um, not needing to do the minutes uh, for, for all their uh, boards. And then if we had other duties, we wanted that person, you know, to have them kind of as a floater um, to help out. Uh, you know, when, when I was in Pepper, we had uh, a person that would float between whatever department what needed a body because somebody was on vacation or out sick or something like that. And again, they weren't necessarily 100% fluent in everything that department did, but at least it was a face that somebody could communicate with um, to at least start whatever their process is, whether mm -hmm. it was an application or a question or whatever it may be. Um, so that's another model that, that you can take a look at is, is um, you know, setting aside, putting in the budget, X number of hours a week for some type of floater or minute taker, that sort of thing. All right. Did you have any thoughts, Jay? On this? No. So is there anything that we could do now? I guess we'd have to review budget numbers and... Uh, we would. I think, uh, I think with our current budget, trying to get another person in here would be next to impossible, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, um, sitting down with, with Susan and Jen and trying to uh, you know, prioritize uh, what items need to be done, and I've, I haven't pushed them because they're both fairly new. They're just getting to the point where they're 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 going from walking to maybe almost running now, um, and um, um, so I I haven't really pushed the issue with them because I think they have their hands.
successful and their time cards have shown that you know they're already um, Jen in particular because the planning board has been so busy mm -hmm. has you know consistently been been over her 30 hour budget and her and I had already had that discussion that you know as we get toward the end of the year we might find ourselves in a time crunch because the funding won't be there necessarily to be able to have her work 30 hours if we're using 38 hours now or 35 hours now or 33 hours now you know every extra hour we're spending now means we are not going to have them later in the year mm -hmm. um, so I've already had that discussion with both of them um, on on that subject is you know we, we are budget constrained and um, so I'm not sure, you know, unless we feel, you know, we see a trend where we feel there's going to be surplus in other line items that we can overspend in the labor line item, um, and it doesn't affect the overall, uh, uh, you know, town office budget. Um, so I guess those are those are all questions that, you know, need to be looked at um, and analyzed to see, you know, what what may be possible with the funds that we have available this year. Okay. That, do we have, what do we have on the agenda for next week already? Is there? Hmm. Boy, now your computer's not in front of me and you're taxing. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm so if, if possible, could, could um, we have that, like do that assessment next week? Uh, uh, sure. Just to kind of take a look at where we're at sure. at this point in the year. Yeah, and yeah. We, I can certainly run a report uh, on, uh, in fact, I can, I can even do that tomorrow. I can run a year-to-date expenditure report um, and email it to all of you. Okay. And I can do it for every department. I can do either just the town offices, or if you want to see town-wide where we are, I can send you the whole thing in a PDF. Okay. Easy enough. All right. Yeah, that'd be excellent. Yeah, might as well see all of it, see how yeah. people are doing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then, uh, which kind of brings me to the next thing, in watching... Um, the school board meeting last night, I don't, I think it's monthly that they get these updates, but each department just did a quick five minute, this is where we're at, like came to the board and said, you know, gave like a little synopsis of where they're at with their budget, like how everything's looking, if there was something that they could like foresee in a month, two months, maybe something's coming up or, um, next year like something that they would want to yeah. maybe include in their budget like any type of talking point and it it was just information to the board from each department well and, and that's one of the reasons why i set up like the quarterly meetings to have each department head come at least quarterly to have that sort of discussion with the board you know we had tim in meredith wasn't available uh, we had peter in mm -hmm. um so that that was kind of the idea behind the quarterly um and then augmenting that with my monthly one-on-ones with them to do basically a budget review and discuss other issues, but that is kind of blown up um, uh, for the moment. Um, so, but that, I was know. The, that was the intent behind both of those exercises is to, is to do just exactly what you're describing. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know if there is anything on the back side like where someone had information ahead of time. You know, like if they checked in with like I don't know what the, the hierarchy of like how like all of that works yeah. but I just know it it felt really nice to hear like to hear each department head speaking about their department and you know, like are you talking like like each school department like yeah like science. the athletic director like each director was on the call um, yeah. They have, facilities yeah but they, they are they have much fewer. I mean, like basically, yeah, they have athletic director, facilities director, and they don't have much else after that. Uh, um, computer, IT director. Yeah, uh, the principal of Messenic. Yeah, each of the principal. Yeah, each of the principals have they, but again, they have they only meet twice a month, mm -hmm. and they have a business meeting, which is where you get that update, and then they have a curriculum meeting or a, yeah, you yeah. know. You know, so I didn't know if it was something that we could do. Like, like I said, it was five minutes. Like it, was, it wasn't, it didn't make the meeting run long or anything. It was just sort of, you know, gives us the, like that overview. Well, and, there's, uh, I mean, there's no reason why we, we, we could do that. I mean, especially with Zoom, I mean, I'm 
assuming Zoom is going to be here forever as a mechanism. Yeah, to, yeah, uh, yeah I don't see it going away. Participate in meetings, so I mean, we could do that anytime you want. Yeah, you just send the information out to whoever you want to hear from, and they can you know, carve out a slice of time. Yeah, so maybe like the first, I think we just have to pick a Tuesday of the month, and then that's just what it is each month, and if they're running close on something, or you know, like it could be anything, you know. So it kind of like alleviates the um, the individual attention that they get sometimes, like through the liaison part. Like if it's something that they can hold on to for a week, and like you know, bring it up yeah. to the meeting, that's fine too. And are you guys are you all right with that, or I'm good with give it. it a shot? Give it a shot. See, I just don't, I just don't want it to turn into a monthly bitch session. No, no, and it, no. It's literally just it's an it's updates and you know like envision. Oh, I, I I get yeah. what I get yeah. what you're envisioning. Yeah, <laughs> I under, I understand the. And this the, is where this is where my uh, the hope is gonna like come out. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So would you like to communicate that out to the department heads, or would you like me to to do that? Um. If yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind. Yeah, because it's it's new, different, and uh. Yeah, I'll figure out how to like word it good and. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So all it is is just bringing communication in a little bit. So. Oops, so did you, you have a preferable decide. Tuesday of the month or? Well, just I'd say start it in May and I'd say do the do the third third Tuesday of the month. All right. Third Tuesday of the month. Starting in May. Why are you on vacation? No, <laughs> I can. I can skip them any any time I want. <laughs> All right, and then uh, Jack Lowe had asked for some budgeting resource material. And Right. You know, we're in I and I was going to look at the budget to see how much we had in there. Uh, you know, originally we were talking about getting an electronic copy of it, but I'm not sure from a copyright licensing standpoint we're going to be able to share that. You know, put it on the server and share it broadly. So my thought was just to get everybody a hard copy, hard copy book. You know, if there was enough for this board and I don't want a copy. You don't want a copy? <laughs> no. Because okay. because here's it there's here's a whole issue and I I mean this is this is my whole deal, unless we're truly going to do the budget process 100% correctly and hold every department head to it, it's a useless exercise and a waste of money. So that's what that is like it's a outline, a specific how, outline. Yeah, how for, how to do town budgets? Yeah. Well, guess what we're supposed to do a zero based budget. Well, and that was a part of this conversation was in this year's budget it's gonna I think net zero or like yeah, it's, you, it's you supposed start to, you're supposed zero. to start at zero and add what you need yeah it's not gonna I'm, well, no, I understand it's what gonna, you're saying and it can John but we have to find a way to communicate that to all the departments that this is like the format that we're gonna go with and it's not a knock on anybody there's some departments that do it just fine and kind of understand it. None of them do a zero based budget, Sean. None of them do. They all go. I'm not. There's no change to my budget from last year on this line item. That's not a zero based budget. Yeah. A zero based budget is you start with zero and you tell me what you're spending in that line item to get up to that amount. Exactly. Not. I'm not making a change in that line item. So, like, I would like that communicated because I really want to go like that route this year because it seems like it feels like that's the way it should be done is the zero based lineup and I want to give everybody adequate notice that this is what's going to be asked of them um, and I would like to start the budget process a lot sooner as well you know here we just ended budgets so we're already talking about well budgets. I mean we, we should be starting in, in September, September. That's is when, yeah. and the thing is is we should these we can give the longer amount of time to the bigger departments. Mm -hmm. There's no reason we should be trying to get fire PD and DPW in September. They're going to need to, they're going to need the longer ones, but you know, come, 
you know, by a certain point, it's very easy for some of these smaller departments. We could knock out those small departments very quickly and get a lot of that done and off the table and then give ourselves more time with the bigger departments. But instead, we, and it happens every year, we ask, we ask, we ask, and we push, and, we, and then all of a sudden we're scrambling and we don't have answers that we need. We don't, you know, but I'm just. Those are years of what was. <laughs> I, I understand what you're saying, yeah. and I've I've only been part of the budget process for eight plus years. Yeah. So, John, do you have reservations about a zero? A zero based, based budget? budget? Yes. I just I, I understand. Baby. No, I understand how it works. That's I mean, it's it's it is the standard process or what you should do. It's like you start with zero and you look at the line item and go, what do I really need to spend? You know, because it's a whole deal when we sit there and go and they go, well, there's no change in that line item for this year. Yep. And for the past three years, you haven't spent the money on it. So we're going to cut that line item. You can't cut that line item. So what's your reservation about a zero base budget? Then? That they're just not going to do it. And then so then we're sitting here doing the hokey shuffle, you know, and. But what's good for us is that. The big three do it. Like they have backup for. But mostly. they don't do a zero base budget. They have backup. Yeah. They don't do a zero base budget. So how, like, none of them do it. Well, the backup explains like how they got they get to that number, and I think that's why we work through some of the bigger ones, easy like more easily because we have all that documentation of, like the backup of why they need the money. Some of the smaller budgets are the departments where there's more turnover in them and they don't quite understand budgeting and how everything works. I don't get it. Like I really still don't like understand like how all of every, all the pieces come together. Um, but I know like you've had great ideas towards it. Um, and I've spoken to other people. Jack seems like he wants to be more knowledgeable in it and like asks intelligent questions of us. And I just, would like to see that growth like to have like instead of like oh this is what always happens and settle on that rock like let's get up off it and you know start put, moving things around and get to that ideal space spot because well, I, I think that we can so what i would put then in in the thing is if you do not have backup to prove the need for these items then the select board will take over and finish your budget for you yeah <laughs> and we just slash and burn. Well, yeah, you'll lose it. Like it'll be slashed. Yeah. 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 If like, you can't, if you not can't that take, we'll take it, it over, but they'll yeah. be sitting there. We'll just like cross yeah. it. If you can't right off show me documentation of what you know, the, the my favorite is they go uh, office supplies four hundred dollars, and they send you a copy of, of a, a printout from Staples mm -hmm. of how much a box of folders costs. Yeah, so how many boxes of folders right. are it's you useless. intending it's to buy? Right, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's useless, you know. And so I'm just, I, I'm, so I don't want to get the conversation I'm just going tonight. I'm good. I don't, I don't need a book, I don't, you know. I don't, and I, I, and I just, and I think I don't it's want to get y'all fired up. No, I just, I don't budgets. need some, I don't need a stupid book to tell me how to, you know, how to do the town budget. And I yeah. think it's a waste of money for any of us. If somebody wants it that bad, can we get one book? Just buy yeah. one. They can borrow Let's it. Let's buy one. I don't. I don't think everyone on that committee needs a freaking book. They can share it. I just it, it, to me that's you know we're talking about wasting money so that we can learn how to do a better budget. Well, we have the finance advisory committee, and they're looking for knowledge and resources. I feel like we should give them the knowledge and resources. It's not like we pay them anything to take hmm. part in that that whole process, so we could support them. You know, and if he feels like he needs support, I say give the man support. I just let I, them eat cake, John. I think it's a waste of money. So that's that's my. How yeah. much money are you talking? Is what I would say. Uh, it might be seventy-five dollars a book. Yeah, yeah. For non-budgeted. For, for one for one book, resource material. So. Um, Speaking of the Finance Advisory Committee, we're still down one member. Has anybody heard of anybody that might be interested? Um, 
my suggestion is to reach out to the two candidates that didn't win. Because neither one, I mean, that's a whole deal. I mean, that's one of the things yeah. that got me, you know, when I, I ran and George, because, and George ran against me and I was defeated. And that was George's first suggestion. Mm -hmm. He says, get on the finance advisory committee. He says, because if you get to understand that and you just get your hands in it, he goes, that's probably 50% of your job is that budget. He says, so get involved. Yeah. So, um, but it was um, Lou Alvarez. And Charlie Jackman. Yeah. yeah. I'd say reach out to one of them. See if, or to both of them, send them an email. And so, or either either of you gentlemen interested in ser serving on the finance advisor committee. Yeah. Because, like I said, I have no intention of running again. So my seat will be up, and then they'll at least have an idea of, you know, what we have to go through just in budget season alone. Yeah. Because I mean, for you, it was an eye opener your yeah. first year. Well, yeah, and then being it out there and doing it mm -hmm. and not understanding. Why the heck you guys were saying what you're saying to our measly little budget? <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, like, I gain a bigger appreciation, like being on the other side of the table. So, so from that perspective, when you were on the direct department, mm -hmm. would starting at a zero base have been better? I mean, if I could wrap my head around, because like we don't budget ourselves, like we're not budgeting people. Um, so this whole budget process thing has been difficult you know like to grasp and put all the pieces together for it so when I was over there it seemed ridiculous like it's ten thousand dollars or something you know like and this it's just so simple you know like the the needs are simple um so we didn't really understand fully why you would need backup or anything but that's why if we could communicate it to some of those smaller boards like the importance of it and why we're going in that direction or this is what we ask for instead of just saying hey here's a budget sheet fill this out and you gotta have backup you know like it was kind of i didn't understand it yeah so, you know, and the backup doesn't have to be like i said we, we don't need to know like i said i don't need a printout from a staple site of every piece of office equipment you're going to purchase but if you'd say you know office general office supplies x amount you know and just say over the course of the year we have to buy um every thing that comes in for x has to have has to have its own folder its own manila folder mm -hmm. and those folders have to be kept for x number of years so we can't recycle them you know year to year so i need to buy you know and these are the, the pieces that we you know just you know Gener sometimes just generalities are better but literally we get a piece of paper that has you know eight columns on it and this and they go yeah that's my budget you know yeah. based on what oh based on last year you know. and i do say yes the the police department and the fire department said but again it's one of those ones we every year we ask do we do you really need to buy every like it's publications do you, do you like i'm curious do you read them all yeah. I mean, I get, I mean, that's one of my things. Like, I get my stuff, like, I get food service stuff, and it's like they send it. It's just automatic. You, you sign up for, you, you're on the state site, you get the food service director thing. It goes in the recycle bin. Mm -hmm. See, now with the monthly meetings, you could ask the department head, what was in uh, this publication and yeah. that for yeah. this month? And yeah, see me, if they read yeah, them. Yeah, give me a synopsis of the, yeah. the largest articles out of your three publications this month. <laughs> but no, so I mean, yeah, the bigger ones do give us better breakdowns, mm -hmm. you know. But, you know, I just, you know, some of the other ones, it, it's, it's just, you know, you get it sent to you and you're like, where's the backup? Yeah. And, and that's the biggest thing is like, I'd rather fo I'd rather take the word zero base budget out and insist on clear backup. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So like some type of uh, cover letter or something like to go out with the the budget sheets or however you do it, like outlining exactly what we're looking for, so they have it like written words. And if yeah. we can get that out at the beginning of September to everybody.
So when I was on the Heritage Commission, you know, back in the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> Have you resurrected that yet? No. No. It's, Come on, it's, it, it's your Phoenix, Jason. Tonight is going Phoenix. too late, but we can discuss that at some <laughs> point. But um, the thing that I remember is we sat, they had a budget, you know, the, the massive Heritage Commission budget. They had to fit, get it to you guys. Yeah. And I remember them saying, you have to keep every line item. You got to keep that money for next year. Otherwise, you'll never get that line item back. And I thought, that sounds pretty stupid. Mm -hmm. If you ain't spending money, why are you asking for it? I, Jay, I completely agree with you because from what I can tell, certain lines get taken out, adjusted, or put in put in at any other time. Like yeah. So I don't, I don't know if that's I mean, like a, a real feeling that the departments have to have, but so I think I think where that comes from and um, is the fear that if they take it out of this year's budget because they don't need it this year their experience here has been trying to get it back in the budget in the following years is going to be almost an impossible task. Um, so that's, I think, kind of where the mindset comes from. Uh, I know when I sold to the federal government, it, you know, under the GSA contract, I used to deal with a lot of federal agencies. And that's where you saw a lot of that mentality because in the federal budget, it really was. If you don't spend it, you're going to lose it. So I used to have people, you know, they're trying to buy something from me for $2 million, but they only have a million. So they buy, they buy half of what they need. So they buy a piece of equipment, but it's not functioning because they don't have the whole thing. With the hope that in next year's budget, when October 1st kicks around and the new, new GSA budget, uh, you know, kicks in, that they're going to have the other million still in their budget to buy the rest of it. Well, I would hope that New Ipswich would not operate on the same principles as the federal no, government because look at their but, deficit. But, but, yeah. but, 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 you know, I'm just trying to describe where no, the I understand. Yeah. It comes from. And it's an adversarial relationship, which right. I guess has its positives and negatives. But And um, I, I, I would think in a small town like this, if well, it what, wasn't adversarial, yeah. because I've heard comments from people. Well, hey, what happens to spend is, every yeah. penny yeah. in our budget? Otherwise, next year. Yeah. Well, it, it, well, that's. I mean, in all reality, if we budget it, we've asked the taxpayers to support it. Mm -hmm. So if you if you don't spend it, then yeah, and and you look historically over two three years, and you haven't spent it. Yeah, we're gonna look at you and go, you haven't spent it for three years. You know. Right. So we're gonna cut it. But what I'd like to see is that they haven't spent it and they get thanked for not spending it. And But, we, uh, but we've already taxed the taxpayer for that money. We already I just heard you talking about looking for extra money in the budget to get another staffer in here. Oh, yeah. So this is the thing. And, you know, like if they come with a need and they're given, if it's a true need. Yeah. For next year, they're like, I know last year we didn't need taxis, but this year, next year, we're going to need a taxi service. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. Yeah, I know it's With pretty, that, But it's, yeah. it seems to me like that would be nice, but it might be La La Land, yeah. Dreamland stuff. But I think so. if we enter the budget, each budget cycle with a clear set of instructions and something that can live past us, some of that adversarial... Like that'll go away, um, and we can change that. Like we have the ability to change that. It seems like it would be feeling. It would now. be helpful. Yeah. Yep. Like I said, we've we've made improvements over the past couple of years with at least getting them to budget out, you know, over the long term instead of coming up, you know, in one year and going, oh, we need to replace every tire in the town. Mm. Yeah. You know, which they used to do that. Think about, oh yeah, I need to replace all the tires on. All seven vehicles down at the fire department. You're like, what? No. Like, no. <laughs> and I've been uh, bringing it up at the planning board meetings and renewing the energy behind the CIP 
um, so that we have that documentation driving forward how we fund our capital reserve accounts as well. So trying to loop that back in because I think that's kind of like teetering on almost getting lost like in the CIP. mix. Capital, capital improvement fund. plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I you know I think I described the process that we used in Wilton mm-hmm. uh, for that, and uh, yet here I mean I've been here a year and a half now, and not once have I been approached by anybody on the planning board about about the CIP. In in you know in Wilton we we would meet uh, at least quarterly. adjustments you know one one year we were looking at one piece of equipment that needed to be replaced but you know we ended up needing a new ladder truck before we needed a new engine and a ladder truck's a heck of a lot more expensive than an engine so it's like okay how do we how do we shift gears here and still make sure that we we cover it and then don't get out of the cycle for re, you know overall for equipment replacement and those, that's why you have to have those ongoing discussions even during the year with the CIP. It can't be like the master plan where you do it and then you just sit it on the shelf mm-hmm. and maybe dust it off at budget time. If, if I mean, that hasn't been done. I've been through two budget cycles here and we haven't looked at the CIP once. Yeah. Um, so and I think it's, it, it was from what Dee had explained, she went through the whole process over 2018 or so to put yeah. together like a rough mm-hmm. CIP. Um, and that she feels like she presented it to the select board, but she wasn't quite sure. But then it was never followed up on. Like it kind of just left. Like yeah. it was left right there. Well, we looked at it. I, I will have to. Say, not to get. It was. It was a confusing document. Yeah. So that's. But I think it's supposed to be more of like a living document, like you were saying, like where right. it's under regular yeah. review, yeah. and we speak about it monthly, quarterly, something. The select board to the planning board. It sounds to me, Sean, like what I said. A selectman's handbook. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there. The, the groundwork's being... Yeah, I would have uh, to say, I don't even know where those went, but I know what, I, we had get, gotten, like I said... It's starting to cy- uh, cycle back through the planning board, and um, so I'm working on that with the um, with getting that all re-energized and alive and becoming something that they do as a function in conjunction with us so that we have like real information and real numbers to go off of because some of the stuff's been implemented already and the numbers that were proposed were awfully close to what they ended up being like the true expenses and some were a bit higher like in the plan Um, but I think you kind of want to be a little bit high than low like in funding those capital reserve accounts so I think a a good necessary piece to the budget process And, and speaking of expenses associated with capital purchases um, we did have a problem with our road grader. Um, we kind of lost a wheel on it, and right now Peter's telling me ten thousand dollar repair bill, and mm-hmm. that's with us doing the work in house. That's just for the parts. Yeah. So, just a heads up on that. He doesn't think it's gonna creep up uh, beyond that, but um, that's what the. That's what the, that's what that expendable reserve is for. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one other thing, I did a, a building number two walkthrough today with Peter, just yep. to take a look and see exactly how bad it was or where we were at. Because um, in further conversations with townspeople, more and more people have come out of the word work of they'd be really angry if that building just got torn down. And I think that's where some of the resistance is coming from. Um, Cause there's a lot of work that's been put into it over the years. Um, and really like when I walked through it, like there was one section that had mold, like coming through the drywall, but 75% of that building looked mold free. No. It made look mold free. Yeah. Like you said, you saw it coming through the drywall. Yeah. So what's behind the drywall? No, I know, (laughs) but I didn't know, like, 
it may be something that we have to look at. You know, the, mold, the mold remediation. Gutting that completely and, you know, just... It's been gutted once. It not, was, I'm aware it, that's actually been reconfigured numerous times, like through the um, steel fabrication time and the SAU was in there. Right, but I'm talking department. when it was after yeah. the SAU went out and the police station went out or whatever, that building was gutted yeah. completely. And I think we spent over half a million dollars on that building. Wow. And then for it to sit just like it was. And one one thing, and it, it seems to slip everyone's mind or whatever. So they, the cooling units that are on top of that roof, mm. um, again, I'm, it's not 100% whatever, but I, there was one point I was told that, yeah, they went up, but they was never sealed. So the water, you know, we spent all this money on mold remediation, and then we allowed water right back into it. Not only that, the, it was shut off then when somebody complained, then all ventilation was shut off. And that that's when the mold mm -hmm. took off, as I recall it. And it was not a good thing, and there's and, a lot of sour grapes. And then the other issue is, is you would have to do with the, it wouldn't just be the walls, you'd have to um, tear up the floor, put a, mer a membrane down, and then re-put the floor in. Yeah. Because um, Earl said the water comes right up. Yeah. You can see the wear and tear on the cement, yeah. you know, because like, it's starting to get powdery. Like, so I mean, you, you, I mean, we couldn't get 1.2 for the building across the street. You're, you're well, talking. the resistance from that for that building was that people didn't see the value in taking something off the tax rolls and the town owning yeah. another oh, get, piece of property. Yeah. What so I'm that, saying is, like I said, we push we, back from yeah, that. But we put half a million into this one already, <coughs> five plus years ago, to do the work. That was five plus years ago. Yeah. What's the cost now to do exactly what we did, the exact thing we did five years ago? Because you're starting back at scratch. Except for, and this is just a number that's been floated, no research, but the eighty to 100000 just in the, the ducting and the AC units that are sitting on top of the building um, can be repaired and cleaned like those aren't total losses mm -hmm. um so that's a resource that's you know that we can still use like in the building um and it may be something that we have to look at because i would like to get a permanent home for the police department um and if the community wants to not like doesn't want to tear that building down then we have to figure a way to work it. Like, what will they support in order to rehab the building and whatever mistakes were made back then or, 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 or the, knowledge the, that was and, gained and the other thing like is from that process? We spent half a million dollars with volunteers. Mm -hmm. Half a million without labor. Yeah. And a lot of the companies donated materials mm -hmm. or gave a steep discount. Right. Yeah. So, so that so was I, half a million dollars spent. Mm -hmm. So the point being, it's going to be a generation before that goes away from people's memories and they'd be able to quote unquote tear it down. You know, like, because all the people that were involved in that are pretty strong willed and of sound mind still and will resist anything that we try to do back there but I'm just trying to figure out a way to make it work and I'm not saying it's gonna be cheap but sometimes people are willing to support one thing and maybe even spend more money doing something than the other option yeah and and I've heard from several people the reason they voted against a new complex is because they said we can't take care of our old buildings I would rather rent off of somebody, then build a new thing, and then in 15 years, somebody says, hey, this thing's getting kind of dumpy. Let's quit maintaining it so that it actually starts falling apart. I, so I would ask, I would ask, who just to throw that out, anybody who ever says that, mm -hmm. you ask them, what building in this town that the town currently owns was a new building when the town got it? 
There's not a single new building that this town owns. <laughs> so we like to fix things. We buy people's used stuff. Yeah. And then complain because it's broken. This wow. was a used building. That was a used building. That was a used building. None of them were built for what they were used for. None of them. Yeah. Oh, what a thrifty town we had. Yeah, it's really cool. It's a cool story. Yeah, and then they, but yet they don't want to have the budget to maintain them. Well, That's good and thrifty. Would be, there would be a willingness to maintain. I think they're maintaining because they're funding the capital yeah. reserve accounts. You know, under like the maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. Under under duress. I don't think it's duress. I think it's a willing. If there's true duress, we'd get the same opposition. We on do. That war article specifically, there wasn't much opposition. Like it, it passed. You know, our budget passed. <laughs> Not. Hey, but it passed. So it's. Um, I don't know. I think it's a worthwhile endeavor, a worthwhile conversation to be had. Because my overall goal is to get the police department back on town land and into a building that we own. And I don't care which way, shape it happens. So that's where I'm at with that. I just want to get, get support for it. Um, one other thing that I had, um, I don't know. Can we talk about like holiday pay? Like that's fine, right? Because with the, the uh, highway department going to their four-day week, 10-hour schedule, okay. um, Peter sent me an email. Um, and he's not, they're not looking for anything extra, but he doesn't understand why, like in a holiday week, his guys wouldn't be made whole so that if like a holiday, like a Monday holiday, they'd only be given the eight hour day instead of 10 when that was their normal working day. So they'd get 38 hours for the week instead of 40. No, he, he can work them two extra hours or a half hour with the other four days. But if that's their normal days. schedule and we approved that schedule. Uh, holiday pay, holiday pay is eight hours, sick days, eight hours. But for that department that works a different schedule. We, they work a different schedule to reward them for the extra hours they put in during snow season. So then we give them three day weekends for the summer. So they're already being rewarded. Mm -hmm. Holiday pay is eight hours. Sick pay is eight hours. It's just, I mean, Yeah. It seems to me like it's a request on their end. It's not something we're putting on them. They prefer to have it this way. And I understand what John is saying. Yeah. And I think that's, would that even be under the uh, laws yeah. that you would pay? Uh, I mean, an yeah. eight hour day is an eight hour day. And now, granted, it's private sector, but when I worked a 10 hour shift, like I got paid for the 10 hours of the holiday because I missed my shift for the holiday. You would? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, but you're talking some private company. Yeah, that's what... Yeah, yeah. that may yeah. be. I yeah. don't know. It seems... Like, I mean, for my... If, you know, that's... How many holidays come up during the summer? You'd get 4th of July, right? Yeah, 4th of July, and they'll roll into... So they'll have uh, Memorial Day, 4th of July, and then... Technically, depending on what we do, I mean, we said it's the week of Labor Day, so we pay them the eight hours for Labor Day, and then they get the other, then they have to work the other 32, because that's the week they come back to five days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't see why it's an issue if it's eight hours, because they could do the regular yeah, work week, the time. right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so then I'm not telling them they can, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying they're only going to get paid 38 hours. Yeah. 
but their holiday pay is eight hours of holiday pay, not 10 hours of holiday pay. Because what about the departments that don't work four day weeks? They're only gonna get paid eight hours for a holiday. Yeah, but that's their, their schedule, like their set schedule. All right, so, so we revoke four day weeks, if it's that much of a problem. That's where you're at. You'd rather revoke. Uh, I would. Re- I would weeks. revoke. You know, if they want, if you, they really want to piss and moan over two hours, no, I'll just, just take the whole damn day away. Now you're working five day weeks. I'm so. I'm just. I'm tired of this crap. Yeah. We're giving them a four day work week to thank them for the extra time they do in the in the winter time when they're on call. And he's gonna bitch about two hours. Spread it out over the other days. I, I didn't say he's bitching. Like there's no bitching in the email. It's just bringing it up, like they go through it each year. That's someone and else bring it up to me too. But. Haven't had it explained adequately to them, maybe or Peter. Like I don't know. Like, but I, it really wasn't a, a normal work schedule for them. Is 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 five eight hour days. Mm-hmm. We allow them to crunch it into four ten hour days to thank them for the extra time in the winter so they can have three-day weekends all summer long. Right. But that doesn't change. So it's, just, it's a choice. That, yeah, and, it doesn't and, change the fact that holiday pay is eight hours. And then, all right. So that, But Peter has to say to his guys and maybe ask them, do you guys want to do the four 10-hour days or do you want to do the five eights? Yeah, the thing this is, is, what, is, this is the, I mean, does it apply this is the policy over, for both. I don't know how he's... Does it, does it apply into sick days then? Yeah, if you take a sick day, it's eight hours. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sick yeah. days, eight hours. So this is where the, that's what we're, we're kind of up against. Right. I like mean, if you're going to say this, then... Yeah, sick days are eight-hour days. Vacation time is eight-hour days. Yeah. You know, if you take vacation, you know, it, it's eight hours. So if you want to pay the extra time, you know, you don't take right. a ten-hour vacation. No, it's fine. Like I see it. Or they get just 40, because their you know. schedule, like the schedule, like we approved, like the ten hour, like their schedule is different than anybody else's. So I don't know why that that poli- policy couldn't change. But that's just my my perspective. Do you think it would come back to bite us across the board? Then how? Why are they getting paid? 10 hours for 4th of July and I'm only getting paid 8. Because that's their work schedule and they're just being made whole for the week. You know? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Maybe. Yeah. I mean, uh, we could have Again. other, you know. It, it, and but back to your point of, you know, taking all your cards and... <laughs> well, I look at it as like the going police... Home. Well, the police like, department. Like, I mean, if, yeah. they, if, if they've been working overtime. Yeah. Right? So they've been working overtime. So their standard. So we're short staffed. So all my offices have been working. You know, just the chief says all my offices have been working 45 hours a week for the past two months. My guy called out sick. So he called out sick one day. So I'm going to pay him, you know, nine hours instead of eight hours because he's been working 45 hours. Not quite the same, but. If he's yeah, working, I'm, I'm if he's working not over, five nine hour about days, overtime, John. Like I'm not like that's not. So I'm happy to like table this, right? Like and just <laughs> not. I just wanted to get some input. Yeah, it's it's a little. It is a little bit of money, no doubt. Mm-hmm. But I wonder about the ramifications. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. With policies that, and I'm new enough here. I don't. <laughs> I mean, some things way, have ramifications that go. Boom. Way, that's why the board has three people. You guys want to pay them ten hours, then you're two votes against one, and they get paid ten hours. Yeah, I'm happy with table. But it. I'm okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I just want. Yeah, that's it. Bring it up. We'll talk to Peter. Okay. All right. And then I said one last thing that came through. From the Gnipus, Paul and Steve. Paula and Steve. The Gnipus? Gnipus. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know that we had reviewed something because there was, like, we had signed off on one of their letters. Um, there's nothing we can really do to stop the traffic. No, and that's it. I mean, yeah. it's, there's. So is there. If, if they feel someone's broken the law with taking trees out, 
then they can contact the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. But there's really nothing we can do about it. All right. Because you would assume all permits have been pulled for them to... Can we get a response back to them stating that? I will draft a response for your review. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think that's part of it is, I don't know if they've heard officially back from us. Um, I think they may have, I'll check, I think at one point, based on one of their letters, I think the Board of Assessors actually responded to them. Okay. Because they were concerned about devaluation of their property. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's much. That's actually my. Oh, you're folder. not in that. I had a folder <laughs> floating around too. All right. You're welcome. Right, there you go. Go. No. <laughs> no. No more folders. Um, like I, had, the, I had one other thing, a follow-up item. Yeah. If you don't mind. No, if you mind, go for it. Uh. What about the sale of the property we own? We're going to look into auction houses or something? Right. So I did. And um, so the, it seemed like the overall recommendation for my peers was St. Jean's. And I think we talked a little bit about that. So yeah. um, I was to look, reach out to them to find out what they would require to, to do that. And I have not done that. We we're authorized to sell the salt shed. Yep. Yeah. The, yeah, the old town garage. Yeah. Yep. Which brings me to that. Is there any news on the salt shed? So they're going to be laying the block foundation shortly. Hmm. And uh, so that is moving along. Nice. He must be moving salt to ringe to store yeah. it, huh? Ringe. Yep. Yep, they did, just to get it out of the way. Yeah. And. Um, the, um, we salted the road the other day on his way up. I was behind him. I'm like, dude, it's 67 degrees outside and you're salting the road. It's leaking out the back of the truck. <laughs> was that before the snow? Yeah. Oh, there you go. No, it was before, like, days before Perfect. the snow. Yeah. yeah. Pre-thought. Yeah. The, um, uh, the other issue that, that Peter brought up in regard to that is the, the red uh, trailer that the fire department uses for response. He says it has been used for like seven years. So I'm going to be reaching out to Meredith to see what she wants to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, it. The fire department isn't going to make use of it. Peter's thinking he might be able to repurpose it for the DPW for something. Yeah, so, and then even the, the black trailer that the police had used, like they used to use that to put cones out like in response to something, I believe. Yeah. It said that that's not in use either. All right. So we can check into that. Okay. All right. All right. I guess this concludes our public portion. The motion to go into non-public. Motion to go under non-public under RSA ninety-one eighty-three. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.